meeting to order. And before we go on, we've had regrets from councillors uh, Calvin Ochimo, Roderick Murphy, and Guy Surratt. So we have an agenda. Anything to add? Hearing none. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Conscious minded, carried. Conflict of interest. Anybody have any conflict of interest to declare? Hearing none. The next thing is we have a presentation. We have a presentation from Janine Muse, the DM, DMO coordinator, and it's on comfort centers. So, Janine, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to take a second to let you, let Council know that uh, next week is Emergency Preparedness Week. So EMO Argyle has gone ahead and uh, this year what we're doing, we're doing the contest on CJLS again. Scott Muse, the IT uh, worker for the municipality, is going to be on Facebook every day uh, posting some information uh, about emergency preparedness as well as running a, a contest. The Canadian Red Cross has given us a, uh, a kit, an emergency preparedness kit for our, for our contest. And one of the things, uh, also uh, Peggy and uh, myself, as well as uh, Wendy DeVoe from the Red Cross, we're gonna be trying to do some presentations around the municipality. And we keep promoting civic signs, so that's what we're gonna do. Having said that, uh, this leads me to the reason why I'm here tonight, and it's all about emergency preparedness. And one of the ways that the municipality prepares itself is with comfort centers. So, uh, this, I have a brief presentation for you tonight. What we do have right now in the municipality of Argyle, and I'm not going to name them all, they're, <coughs> they're in front of you, and those are mostly fire halls, which are around the municipality, and uh, as well as the Quinnan Community Center. You will see that we've also uh, added on the bottom is the Mariner Center. So if there's anything major that we have to evacuate, let's say 100, 200 people, then we don't have the facility, especially if there's a power outage in the municipality to uh, to house that many. I mean, we have schools that we could use, but in, if there's a power outage, of course, we can't use it because there'd be, no, there'd be no power. They don't have generators. So those are the list of the comfort centers that we have presently. So comfort centers, what we hope to have are comfort centers that reflect our all hazards plan and we went through an all hazards plan at the last EMO planning meeting here at the municipality and we added two new hazards to our hazard all hazards plan and one of them was water shortage and the other one was uh, gas shortage. We're not talking about gas shortage tonight but this is one of the real realities that the municipality faces once in a while so uh, priorities for water shortage issues are access to drinking, which is potable water, and that's usually an easy fix. The municipality only supports uh, bottled water when it comes to drinking water. So whatever is available through the municipality, through any fire departments or whatever is available, other than potable water, we do not support, and we really don't want people to, to get sick or anything like that. So the other one is access to non-potable water, which is non-drinking. The third one is showers and washers. As we know, when in the last few years, in 2016 and 18, we've had water shortage issues, not only in the municipality, but surrounding areas. So what do we do to support the community with those issues? So what I've come up with is a uh, three, three-year plan for you to look at. It's, of course, not written in stone. It's flexible, but we hope that you will support this in some way financially so that we can make the comfort centers 
what they should be in terms of our all hazards plan. First of all, I've divided it in three years, and first of all, we have year one. <coughs> what I recommend, because this covers a very large area, is the new Eelbrook Fire Hall. What I would like the municipality or council to consider would be a, um, a hookup for an outside water dispensary. And what I have there is a $1,600 quote. So the ones that I've received quotes from, it, it, it's pointed out here. They already have showers in their plan and washer hookups in the plan to build a new building. So, and it services a very large area. The second thing that I propose is retrofitting the well on the Dontrema Road in West Pumnico. And this was used uh, a lot by the residents. We were very fortunate that the owner of the property allowed us to use the well. The West Pumnico Fire Department dropped their own pump in there, but they used the pump and they, we don't want to use it so that it, you know that they're going to they're going to have to buy a new one eventually because it was it was widely used that that year. So from a quote we have seventeen hundred dollars. Well, seven one thousand seven hundred and seventy seven. And the third one, because Witchport was very dry, and the only way that we could get non-potable water was to use a tanker <coughs> from TIR. So we proposed the installation of a water station in Wetchbore on a property owned by the municipality of Argyle. And we're looking at the existing school. They're going to be building a new school. The well there is, I've checked with the, uh, with the janitor, and the well there is a dug well. It's 20 plus feet. And uh, it services the school. But in terms of water shortage, we probably would need a drilled well. So from all the calls that I've made and from talking to a lot of people, uh, we've basically said, you know, $13,000 for a drilled well. And that's a little bit on the high end. But of course, you never know with a drilled well what you're going to find, where the water is, what the recovery rate is. Building you would have to have a, a building probably, which is a, a small 10 by 10, and I've checked with local contractors, they say the maximum would be 4,000. You don't think it would be that high, but the maximum on the slab with the door. And from a quote from a local uh, plumbing electrical company, as you can see, it's $4,000 for uh, a lot of the hookups for the pump and everything else. I've brought Jonathan LeBlanc here with me tonight to answer any technical questions that you might have because, uh, to be honest, it's a little above my pay grade to answer all of your technical questions. And uh, trenching to and from the building would be 500. So that is the proposal for year one. That's a total cost of around $30,000. It doesn't add up to, uh, to 30, it adds up to around 25, but I've put in a 20% 20, 20 contingency plan because you never know what you're going to come up with. Year two, Quinnan Community Center presently has a drilled well in the back of their property. It was built in 1978. We don't know what the recovery rate or what the output is from that well, why it was never used. I've been in contact with the people, uh, well, the family member of the drilling company, and uh, they can't find any data, and Quinnan Community Center can't find any data. So to assess that well, it would be a cost of approximately 2,000. And if it was, if the recovery was good, the water output was good, it would be another approximately four or 5,000 to set up that well again. So if you wanted to drill a new well, it would be again uh, 13,000 plus uh, hook up to the community center at 2,000. 
One of the things that uh, right now we've talked about non-potable water, right? Sources of non-potable water. Secondly, what we felt was needed and based on the demand from the community would be showers. The Quinnan Community Center was the first one at the get-go when I asked, what do you need for uh, your comfort centers? And they came to me and said, we would really like showers. And that was one of the things that people uh, needed during water shortage issues. And uh, they have a cost of 31000 but they're willing to pay half of that. The community center is willing to come forward with 15 of that amount, or 1550 it is except the I checked with the people from the community center and it is accessible the showers that are being planned East Pomnico fire station uh, from a quote 15 180 accessible to the public and to anybody with uh, mobility issues and one of the smaller uh, fire halls the Amira Hills fire station is looking for some money to upgrade their facility. They do have a shower. They do have a generator backup. They do have a drilled well. It is not owned by the, it is shared by uh, somebody. So um, they, they have now obtained a propane stove. They're really working hard to make their facility a, a comfort center. So total for year two is 50,000. Not to say that we can't move anything from year two into year one or something from year one, two into year three. This, as I said, this is not written in stone. Year three, uh, last but not least, one of the things that uh, was identified was that the uh, comfort centers needed showers. I did a little bit of investigation. The commercial grade washers from Leon's are 948 plus HST. There's three facilities that have asked, or three fire halls or community centers that have asked. One is uh, Quinnan, and they've asked for two, and East Pomnico one. I should mention here that uh, last year in 2018, uh, East Pomnico did install a washer in their fire hall, and in 20 days, it was used 72 times. So that's pretty, pretty high, instead of traveling to town. Uh, one thing that doesn't really have anything to do with water shortage, but it, it is an issue with the comfort center, we're talking about comfort center upgrades, is that the uh, Wedgeport Fire Station needs a larger generator. And if, and I don't know what the, uh, what council, plans to do with the generator here, but we've discussed it bef with the fire station and uh, fire hall in Wedgeport, and it would have enough capacity to do what it needs to do there, because they need a larger generator. They have all the things that a comfort center has, except uh, a water output, a water station. I mean, they have showers, they have washers, they, I mean, it's a very nice facility that would serve as a comfort center as well as a shower. Uh, Surrey's Island Fire Hall, the, uh, they did have a quote for showers, but because of restructuring the building, it was basically way out of our league. And, but they did ask for propane stove. So in year three, I'm sure that there will be other requests that are coming in. I mean, I've put 20,000. So whether that will be designated for that year or not, that's a, a good possibility. So once, if council approves uh, some funding, I'm sure that other requests will be coming down the pipes. So any questions? I have a question. The, uh, when you're looking at showers, yeah. you have a quote of uh, $31,000 for, for one area and 15000 for another. That's a big difference to, between it, two quotes. It is, it is a big difference. Sometimes it's a matter of the building itself. 
and the renovations that go into the building to okay. create an area for the showers. Mm -hmm. okay. And could be with the contractor. It's, it's a little difficult to say, but I mean, they're willing to pay half. So, exactly. so which yes. brings down the cost considerably. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, it's not a question, more, it's more of a comment. Uh, the emergency measures or management organization um, and the municipalities of Shelburne, or I guess municipalities in Shelburne County, Queens, and Yarmouth counties uh, were all asked to meet with the minister back in the fall of 2018 with the, the uh, objective of listing much of the things that, that Janin has listed here right. around um, you know, being proactive around the, the water uh, situation that has happened twice in three years. So <clears throat> the minister was very eager to receive a letter. He did receive a letter and we received a response saying, thank you for the letter. Uh, the information that we have is they're not, they, they have made a decision on the uh, amount. Uh, one of the things that, one of the areas that we may actually be able to get funding from is there has recently been a, a, a release, I guess, or a relaxation around the surplus around 911. And that money is to be earmarked for safety related purposes. And there's a good possibility that that or other funding uh, could could aid us in this project. Right. But we won't know that uh, before the budget is set for this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, and keeping in mind that this is something that is going from Queens County to Yarmouth County. So how much, how much money is available and how that gets uh, divided amongst many municipalities, we, sh we just don't know yet. Mm -hmm. But there is the possibility of funding mm -hmm. for a portion of this. The other thing I might want to mention is that you may notice that I didn't include uh, Kemp and Lake Vaughan in any of the requests. Those two uh, fire departments are service both Yarmouth and Argyle. So any request would be done in, in conjunction. And I know that the Yarmouth municipality, as part of the proposal to the province, put in some funding for that area. To, to update, especially in terms of water shortage. Anybody else? Just the, the email you were referring to, Ellen, I understood when I read it that they're planning to try to get another meeting together yes, yes. With, the, with the minister. Yes, that's correct. So that's positive. He's mm -hmm. following up anyhow. Mm -hmm. well, there's no more questions. No Thank more. you very much for the presentation. Thank you. It's very good, and I'm sure we'll be looking at it uh, seriously as well. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Adoption of minutes. EMO Planning Committee meeting minutes, February 6, 2019. So moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contra minded, carried. And the uh, 139th annual council meeting of April 9th. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Contra minded, carried. I don't see any business rising. Financial statements. You're on. <laughs> All right. Enclosed is the financial report to March 31st, 2019, showing a surplus of $115,171. At this point, most of the revenues and expenses are in and have been recorded. However, we are still waiting for a few more. Therefore, the surplus will, will change, but not significantly. We are showing some revenues higher than budget in a few areas like sewer and water. The bulk of this surplus is the Wedgeport sewer operating levy, which only began this year and was not budgeted for. The East Pomnico Water Utility user fees came out higher than budgeted as well. Sale of service, this is the Wellington turbine. 
This is an item that we're actually waiting for an actual number on. Um, you'll see it's estimated at $50,000 in this report. However, we did receive confirmation today that the number is actually $56,763, therefore a little over $15,000 more than budgeted. Um, service, of service to other local governments is showing higher than budgeted at year end which the bulk of this is due to the CAO staying on as interim manager at the airport longer than anticipated. Other areas showing surplus in the revenues are return of investments and penalties and interest. These line items are estimated, usually estimated and budgeted conservatively, so they're showing a little high, they actually came out higher. There are a few revenues that came out lower than budget, but not many, um, one of them being the deed transfer tax. This amount fluctuates monthly and yearly and has been significantly higher, as you all know, than budgeted for numerous years. Therefore, decided to increase the budget this year. However, we did not receive as much revenue as hoped. Extraordinary revenue came out a little under as well. We did not collect as much, as much day camp revenue fees revenue as we anticipated. However, you will see that in the day camp expenses, they were lower as well than budgeted. These numbers are based on the number of participants each year and changes each year. The HST rebate on council st stipends is also lower due to the regulation changes that occurred in January of this year. Um, to look at some of the variances in the expenditures, legislation came out over budget, which is due to the CPP adjust ju adjustment that we had, ma had to make. Otherwise, there would have been a significant savings there. There were some cost savings in IT, with the bulk being in software maintenance and capital expenses. Grants to organizations is over budget to, um, due to the $5,165 grant that was given to the Club Social des Îles for their emergency funding, and also the $11,698 of additional funding given to the Mariner Center. Both of these amounts were previously approved by Council. EMO is over budget by $12,320, which is due to the cost of supplies given out during the drought of last summer. Property inspections is under budget by $18,400, mostly in conference and training, fire inspection services, and maintenance for the fuel, and fuel for the mowers and equipment. Planning and zoning was, a, was new to our budget this year and was budgeted a little conservatively, therefore showing a surplus of just over $10,500. We had budgeted an amount for the operations at the Industrial Commission as a contingency that was not used, therefore leaving housing and RDA with a surplus this year. Tourism is over budget this year in order to purchase the post for the direction, dire directional signage project. This was previously discussed and approved by Council earlier this year. And lastly, Recreation Services is showing savings in programming, day camp expenses, and repairs to capital projects. And I will, if there's any questions. Well, you covered it good. Thank you. If there's no questions, we need a motion to accept the financial statements as presented. So moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Much minded. Carried. When does the auditors? Uh, the auditors, do we have the date? Yep. The week of June 17th. Mm -hmm. There's uh, just one other item before we move on, if we, if you don't mind, uh, yes. Mr. Chair, is uh, typically what we do at the end of the year, even, even before we have audited uh, statements, we uh, make a decision to make a motion to transfer to reserve. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we have, as as the Director of Finance has indicated, we have an operating surplus of 115. Uh, we expect that to go up and down, uh, uh, but we're comfortable in suggesting that an additional $65,000 could be transferred into the capital reserve. Uh, if you recall, the rules, the accounting rules changed recently. Uh, the province requires 100% of any surplus to be transferred to a reserve one way or another. Mm -hmm. We do not require a, trans a, a motion if it goes to the operating <coughs> reserve, because the expectation is, is that's where it goes. Right. However, we would um, require a motion to transfer an amount to the capital reserve. So keeping in mind, once you put that, num that amount in the capital reserve, it is earmarked solely for capital purposes. We 
uh, have quite a few capital commitments that will happen over the next five years. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest um, respectfully to council that a $65,000 transfer to the capital reserve would be prudent. And, and if it's something that you're prepared to do now, we could do that now. Uh, if you wish to defer until we have a little bit more time and information, um, obviously that number would be even more accurate. But whatever the case is, if we if, there, if a surplus remains behind, it will automatically go to the operating That's right. So the surplus could change then with some of the expenses that we haven't paid or... There's not many, but there are But there could be that some that's, gonna, that's going to... They usually to, come in the month of May. Yes. Well, it's up to council what they want to do. I'm uncomfortable, and if there happened to be more you wanted to go in capital later, you just do another motion to add, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, but I, my only concern is 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 that I, I wouldn't be I would, wouldn't like to be in a situation where we said it was 65, and then for some reason there was an adjustment that dropped the, the surplus to, like, 55. That would be right. the only concern but, I'd have. But the, the possibility of that, to, to make that much difference, is hardly... No. <coughs> no. In, right? We have about a $15,000 receivable that we're going to be setting up. Okay. So that's only like so that's just going to put that to one third. Right. Exactly. And there'll be there'll be other expenses, but yeah. sixty five is conservative. I think we will right. be okay. Well, I'm pre prepared to make that motion. Okay. Sixty five thousand okay. in the capital reserves from yeah. two thousand eighteen nineteen operating budget. Correct. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Contraminded? Carried. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marshall. Yeah, we did approve. Okay, yes. <laughs> we did approve the uh, acceptance. Uh, strategic priorities, there's nothing there. Grants, allocation, and approvals. There's a two page, and that's the average of all our submissions, all, all the councillors' uh, submission of what they wanted to do with the uh, spring grants. So, so do we approve this here? Yes, I mean, the, the objective is to go through uh, this list. There's a couple of things that we want to make sure that council's aware of that might adjust your Yes. Your allocations here. Okay. Um, but typically, yeah, we, we what we typically do is and 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 as Ailey has has put up on screen oh, is, is. Okay. the prior year approved amount. I realize that's hard to see from there, but you do have the same information essentially in front of you, um, just in a slightly different format. So what we wanted to do is uh, show you the last year's approved amount to to recipients and then the requested amount this year, the average that you have calculated and everybody submitted, uh, uh, everybody submitted their averages, and then the council approval amount, which may or may not be the average amount. Okay. So there are a couple of homework items that I think we need to kind of address specifically, and then uh, we look for your guidance around those, and then we can dive in, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. So, if you'll permit me, there is a request on here from the Bay of Funday, Fundy Sea Kayak Society. Mm -hmm. I saw that in... So typically, we had set money aside for that particular event because it's one of our, I guess, for lack of a better term, signature events. Mm -hmm. uh, we have provided for 7,500 under a separate line item. Therefore, if council wanted to, they could take this application out of its calculation because it's actually in another line. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to presume that for you, but, but it's always been that way, and so we just, we made sure that we had it budgeted in another line. So the first, that first item, um, if, if you wish, so, the, so the, the, the key is, is you can still debate what you want to give them. Yes. It's just we have that money somewhere else. 
And I, I was under the impression, and I think I asked that question of Ailey, like when I saw it in, in this list, right? Whether or not that, that should be in here or not. Because I, I was under the impression that we already had money set aside for that because of the request that it, that it was. Right. But, you know, we were told, well, they have applied here through grants, so. Which is the right thing to which do. Which is the right thing to do. So we didn't want to presume anything. That's why it's on the list. Okay, okay, yeah. So, so that item, I guess, we would require some guidance from council whether or not you want to show that as a special events grant, which is already, there is a 7,500 amount set aside for that. Mm -hmm. In this upcoming budget, yes. correct. Okay. So, so if you're, so the first question is, if you're comfortable with that, we would take it off this list, mm -hmm. and then you just, you just bought yourself a little bit more room to pick exactly. it somewhere else. Right. However, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm denying you the debate mm -hmm. around whether or not it should be seventy five hundred or not. That's right, and, and that would give us an extra thirty six because what happened in the averages, it, 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 it mm -hmm. brought it down to thirty six. Um, I know I, if the money is set aside, I think that would be a good idea to have that 36 and be able to put it somewhere else in the other uh, grants that we have there. That, that's just my, my view on that. I agree. I agree. I agree. Because the money's already set aside. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I mean, I'm sure we can find a place to put that 36 that mm -hmm. yeah. that would help others. And so what it can do, if you permit me, is is it'll take that 7,500. We can have a discussion on what the actual number should be, mm -hmm. uh, but but we, but we it's not going to influence this discussion. Right. No. Right? That, mm -hmm. So we're taking the 3,600 mm -hmm. out. We're, we're taking it out of here, but, our, oh, we're not going to, we're not going to use it in, well, we can use it in other places. Right. In other places. Yeah. But, yeah. but we can't approve this budget, this, this, this right now, if we're going to do that, because all of a sudden, do we have to each, each councillor go back and redo what we did so that you can get a different average? Or, how, or, or we can discuss it here. Yeah. yeah. We're going to make the decision here. That's is what we would typically That's do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Could, can it go into fall grants? That's another possibility. I, I will say that there is at least one other organization that missed the deadline for March and is fully expecting to do a September application. Okay. Now, uh, our policy <coughs> is clear, however. If somebody was, uh, if somebody applied and, and got denied funding for March, they're actually not entitled to apply again in September. Oh. Um, I just remember. But, but they, they were denied because they were too late. No, I'm sorry. That's the general rule. If somebody, if somebody didn't no. like those, those that who didn't make the the deadline, right? That's okay because they, okay. they actually didn't apply. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So if you apply and get denied, you yes. can't apply again. In exactly. So the so the case around the Sea Kayak Society, right? They they according to the policy, they would be denied because they applied for the march. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just sorry for the. There's there's one place. Um, I was hoping that we put more money into is the uh, Yarmouth County Trail development. Mm -hmm. That goes right through our municipality, mm -hmm. and I, I was hoping that there would be more money uh, allocated to that one. I agree with that totally. Where so is that? One, sorry? It's way down, down towards. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I totally that agree. That there that. touches all mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. communities. That's used a lot. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a number area. Yeah. Yep. So that we could put money there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I still say we're missing a lot there as far as trail activity around here. And I'd love to be able to see that trail going right through Yarmouth. It's going you, into, there's going to be... There. Pardon me? They've applied. They're, they're, what? They're Seriously? Talking, yeah. They're talking about... Finally. They, they're not sure it's going to happen, but they are looking at the possibility of having it done. Applied provincially for the laws? Well, is that I think so, yes. Yeah. That is amazing. Yes, there's so much is. potential there. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. So they asked, the trail asked for five, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. could we put that up to their five? Mm -hmm. Fine by me? Yep, me too. Fine by me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it takes a part of that. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, tri the tribe has spoken. Um, so, <laughs> so so that's good. So, so there was another uh, housekeeping item, if you'll permit me. Yes. Is uh, there is a request here from the Club des Audacieux de Quinnen. Mm -hmm. 
So two issues. Number one, we're, we still have the community hall grant program. So technically, that could be denied straight out exactly. because they don't qualify for, qualify for this grant. No. However, you just had a presentation from Janine, yeah. and one of the options was for, uh, well, one of the many options in Quinnon was for a drilled well. Mm -hmm. This request is for a drilled well. Yes. So I would suggest that their request is actually an emergency management request mm -hmm. and if an, if you're looking at developing a plan for comfort centers regardless of how long it might take you to do that I would suggest if this is something that is interesting to you this year um, that it ought to be pulled out of this mm -hmm. uh, consideration and moved into potentially the list of projects that Janin <coughs> is yes. proposing under water conservation and emergency management planning. Mm -hmm. So, and as it turns out, that number is lower than her quoted amount for a drilled well in Quinnon. So, um, I, I kind of like the Quinnon quote better. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I guess the, my point is, is again, this is one that we've allocated uh, 18, 1900 dollars to. Yes. It, it technically is EMO and should come out. Okay. So, and, and technically could be denied straight out because it is, it is not eligible under here. No. Again, we put it there because we didn't want to presume anything. We wanted you to know. Okay. So, we, we would give them the money but under a different project and we would it, take it out of this one here. If, if you decided to do could, a comfort center investment, then, then I would suggest you have it. somebody ready to do it. Exactly. And so you could, if that was an interest of yours, <coughs> look at her three-year plan, Janine's three-year plan, and see whether Quinnon's in year one. It doesn't actually matter because okay, so Quinnon's in year two. Um, I would suggest that the, the Wedgeport option, while we want to hit Wedgeport as quickly as possible, there's a lot of uncertainty around where the school's going to be, and some of that infrastructure could be built into a school infrastructure. So, um, so that may or may not be the right one to do in year one, presuming that you want to do that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Janine is, is, is not picky to what goes first, mm -hmm. but she's identified Wedgeport first for a reason because of the, the, the water situation hit them the hardest as a community. Yeah. So that's what I would have to say about that number. Um, so whatever the wishes of council, uh, I guess the first question is, it, it really ought to be zero here, regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so the, next, the only other question is, is whether it goes to EMO or not. And so, so that's the ask that was for yeah, Fifty eight hundred ninety three dollars. Yeah, and it's nineteen hundred that, that the average. <clears throat> so that would give us another nineteen hundred to, to put some ours else as well. Yeah. Is there any halls that needs to be emerged? I, I we can't see it anymore. The details of, of what a halls or anything that has to be. It's the only one. It's the only one. All well, the others are fire departments. Okay, so I have another idea. <laughs> I studied this a lot. Boy, she's <laughs> right on tonight. I well, I studied this a lot. I look to see where it's more mostly needed. And uh, the Women's Auxiliary, the Yarmouth Hospital, that's another place where it touches everybody and they do a lot of work for, for the hospital. So um, I don't know what your thoughts on, on the hospital. Or is there somewhere in our community that we need it more? Hello. I think it. Oh, sorry. University of Saint Anne. I don't know if you want to mention that. As that well. was the third okay. housekeeping <laughs> item. I'm getting there. Okay, good. But, but Kathy's taking every time I put money on the table. Kathy takes it. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's an amazing experience right now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, there's just one other item. If you, if I'm sorry, I don't. I, I really hate to get in the middle of what you're doing here, but. Oh, that's uh, fine. So there's just one other one is the. Uh, on, for information uh, in today's agenda, the municipality of Clare approved the entire amount from the Université saint anne for oh. the uh, the online uh, the presentation that you had while I was mm -hmm. yes. away, um, and so that is also in this list. I just want to make sure everybody understands that's on this list, and I'm not I'm not suggesting that changes any behavior whatsoever on your part. It's completely up to you, 
but it is listed here. It's on it's seven thousand eight hundred ninety seven, and the amount approved was uh, considerably lower than that. But I just I just wanted you to like you should have all the information on that one. That's and those are the only ones I believe that were housekeeping, and then. Sorry to get in your way there, Councillor Bork. Oh, Councillor Bork is thinking here now where she's going to put that money. Like, she smiled when you said that, and she, yeah. Uh, and, and the other thing is, is that you were able to distribute 52500 Your average has come out to 49000 Exactly. I was just doing that. There's so $2,600 there. That there's a, right. So I think that's everything, and then I'll... And then you can have a conversation finally. <laughs> so, so the the first thirty six hundred, the first thirty six hundred was we said to the uh, uh, well we the go trails. no we, we, we go that. up to their re request. Okay. Their request was five thousand, and we allocated twenty three hundred. Twenty three hundred. Be twenty seven hundred to bring it. 20, to oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, so he we, doesn't use the whole thing. I, I, I must have looked thing. at the wrong line because I thought it wasn't going to bring him yeah. up to the thousand, but uh, five five thousand. Right. So nine hundred remaining. So we got nine hundred, nineteen hundred and twenty six hundred. Twenty four. So really, we have. We have forty four hundred dollars. I got fifty four hundred based on what you guys just did. Fifty four is correct. Fifty four yeah. is correct. We have fifty four hundred. That's what you guys have left mm -hmm. to play with. Sure. Oh yeah, that was twenty four. It, it is fifty four. Yeah, yeah. fifty four left. However, yes, these are averages. Yes, and any single one of these can be can changed. Can be changed. Mm -hmm. So we, we, I just want to make that. sure that exactly. that's made clear. So, okay, now, now, now we're where do we? Are all the festivals at fifteen hundred? Is that yes. usually what we do, right? Yeah. Other than... You should look at D if you consider the festivals at 1400 Yeah, and then what's that 1000 Oh, never mind, sorry. Yeah. Kemp right. Kemptville Bicentennial <coughs> is under a festival. It is, it's not a festival, but it's like, it's, a, it's obviously a, a one-time event yeah. uh, for Kemp, East Kemp, who's celebrating 200 years. Well, Village yeah. asked for 1000 and our average was 900 We should just put that up to 1000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's little... The, things like that, mm -hmm. have to fix up. <laughs> the Société Beauton, Touristic Beauton, and uh, they requested 1700 and uh, and I know the reasoning behind that, because they're going to be, it, it's to hire somebody, and they needed the 1700 to make up the difference of what they're going to be. All right, well, I'll put and, that and I think we ended up with 1500 mm -hmm. So I wouldn't mind seeing that go up to what they... To what they they, they need to, mm -hmm. to cover for sure. Which one is that for? Societe mm -hmm. Soci Societe Historic. Mm -hmm. Societe Touristic de Bonton. So it would be just above the Wedge Fortuna Tournament Festival. So we're going to bump them up to 1700? Is that what you're saying? To 17. Yeah, bring that up to 17. I, the West Pubnico Improvement Society, now they're a new improvement society, new society down home trying to. Uh, make the villages of West Pubnico and Lower West Pubnico look better for everyone, for all the tourists coming in. I see it's $2,321.84 they asked for. The average came out to $900. Uh, i would like to see that one go up to $1,500. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be quiet. Let another councillor... I like Kathy, that one's a fine with me, but Kathy's suggestion of the hospital too. Mm -hmm. We never mm -hmm. dealt right. with that. But uh, did we take care of the trail? Could, yeah. Yes, we did. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The I'm, trail is taken out of that. I misunderstood that. No. Okay, cool. Yeah. So is that all right to put that one up to 50? I have no problem. Okay, I'll be quiet. That was my. So Kathy, yours was to help the women's auxiliary yeah, hospital, right? Yeah, the hospital. They asked for 2,000, so we could put that up to two. That's another thousand. Yeah. Considering what's going on in healthcare, I don't think You're we, right. we'd have any negative It'd feedback. It'd be crazy not one. to help them out. Exactly. So after those changes, you guys have thirty-six hundred dollars okay. left. Okay. Thirty-six. Did you yeah. get the six hundred for West Pubnico? I did. Yeah. Okay. That's great. What about Nikhil? They asked for two thousand. Yeah. Our average is nine hundred. They're doing a thirtieth 
anniversary. An anniversary. It's a one-time. Yes. Kind of thing. Could we bump that up? Yep. You sure can. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend, Councillor Albright? Well, we give fifteen hundred to the other festivals. At least I would say I that would we should put it up go to at least to fifteen hundred, like the other. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. From, sorry, what was it? It was nine. Nine. Yeah. And to yeah. fifteen. Okay. Yeah. So it's three thousand now. So three thousand. Yep. Fifteen. Which Port Tuna Festival? That one. They asked for three thousand and average is twenty three hundred. You might as well put it right to three. Yeah, that's a big event. That's that's a that big brings event. a lot of people yeah. in. We usually yes. do. Yeah. Agree with that. I just sound like a squeaky wheel. When that's I bring all right. Over here. I, uh, I heard your wheel. Uh, <laughs> I, I only have one in my one in my district six, so I'm going to ask for five hundred more dollars. Which one's that for? Argyle Historical Church Restoration Society. Mm -hmm. You want it to go to twenty one hundred? No, five like two thousand. Oh, two thousand. Okay. It's at fifteen, right? Yeah. So how much we got left now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The School of Karate Mukashi, they, they asked for 400, mm -hmm. we gave them two. I wouldn't mind seeing that one go to, to 400. <coughs> that, that, that involves a lot a of the lot kids of uh, from what, the that? area. The, the karate club yeah. that they have. So you guys want to bump that up to? To, to, to their, yeah, to their ask of 400. Yeah. What do we have left? What, what's that bike again? What's that all about? I have no idea what that is. 1600. Okay, I need to shed a light on that. It's a voluntary group in the with They fix up bikes for free. Oh, they can right. Bring a broken bike, they fix up for free. And yes. Can, and it's, uh, they even, if you want to just donate a bike, they take that, fix it up, and give it away for free for someone in need, kids. So a it touches in Yarmouth County? Yeah, they're sitting, they're operating of the police station yes. uh, across from the Hebron. Yeah. Club. yeah, that's right. In uh -huh. Hebron. I, 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 would, I would bring this. We only gave him a hundred. When I see a hundred yeah, at an ask of two thousand, to me sometimes I think it's Maybe better put to it give up him to nothing. But I would give it. I would, I would bring that up to five hundred. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think it's a very good cause for it effective transportation. Yes, mm -hmm. especially for the kids. Mm -hmm. You guys have twelve hundred dollars left, and the from Acadian they asked for uh, five hundred dollars. Uh, average is three. Can we put that up to five? And that was for. Um, They're the ones that, that want that. Uh, they want uh, pamphlets out. Pamphlets mm -hmm. to yeah. hand out. Yeah. For. Um, for uh, uh, women. For women. Uh, not necessarily. It's. No, it's it's. What, trafficking. Sex trafficking. Oh, trafficking. trafficking. Sex human trafficking. Yeah. Human trafficking. Yeah. Trafficking. Human, yeah. Human, yeah. human yeah. trafficking. Yes. Yeah. 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 Human sex trafficking. I don't know what they call it. Is it? It's human trafficking. Human trafficking. Okay. Yeah. But. Do you have a? What were you going to say? Nothing. No. Okay. Let's start looking at some of our... What was our New Horizon looking for money for? I'm trying to remember that myself. Okay. Yeah, we have some. Yeah, I'm just going to get it. We have a $15,000 ask and we give... 200 or 300? Come with the beach. For, for where? Oh. The Ark. Sure. The Ark. Yeah. Oh. So for the, the SAR? Yeah. yeah. They were looking to update their electrical system and to purchase a heat pump. And we averaged 1,100. So is the, is, just to the clarity, uh, Lee. Is uh, so would that be at the Knights of Columbus? Does it say which building? No. I, th I think they're at the Knights of Columbus, uh, which could be considered a community hall. Ask. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could be, but I'm not sure. We'd have to dig into that one. I think. Throwing it out there, Cumbles Hill Beach is our only beach. They're asking for three thousand. Our average is eighteen hundred. They recently had drama. I don't know if you guys remember about yeah. a year ago or something. Oh, yes. and, uh, I think there's been a community uh, get together to try to 
bring it back to life. So I don't know. But food for thought. That's a good one. Everybody likes that place. Agree. Yeah. How much we got left, Ava? You guys have uh, twelve hundred dollars. Put it on the beach. That would do it. So Camosa Beach Committee, my favorite. Okay. Take care of that. Le Village Historic Acadian de la Nouvelle Ecosse. They asked for a thousand. We gave them nine hundred. Didn't I mention that one? You guys have oh. no money left. No. We have no money left. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's what you have to. Yeah. You have to steal. That's the story of our life. From someone else. <laughs> we're, we're broke. <laughs> um, now, a lot of times, and I'm just and I'm just trying to help you along for efficiency. A lot of times, what happens is, uh, particularly on the um, on the items uh, on the page two, the last part. Oftentimes, uh, some of these um, really don't provide a note or something, yeah, and I would be that. insulting to the request. So, Shark Scramble. I think it's it's an opportunity for you to say, well, we actually can't support all of these, and it might be a way to support some of them better than what you have. Um, I mean, I I don't I don't necessarily. Uh, personally want to go line by line, I mean, I want to help you from an efficiency perspective, but it's a political uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. If it was me, I'd take everyone that's under $400 and eliminate them to zero. Some of them were just that $200 ask, so. though. Oh, is that right? I yes. One was. The Southwest Paddlers Association. It was four and fives. Four, okay. Yeah, but yeah a lot of them are insulting. Like the shark scramble, they asked for exactly. a thousand. Ask for a thousand and we give them a hundred. Yeah. So what one of these would be? Um, so take that hundred and put it. Where was it that we were missing? It was the village. The, the village. Put it there. The shark scramble hundred. Put it at the village. Mm -hmm. So the village. So the village of story for like a hundred thousand. There's Yarmouth what? Events Association, $6,000, right. and we averaged $100, so we can't do that. Okay. Yeah, I know. I would add that to Relay, to, relay, relay for, for Life. life. Mm -hmm. I would take all those little 100 ones and put them for Relay for Life. We got a couple of new requests, uh, two of which are curling clubs in our neighboring yes. municipalities. Um, obviously, there's a lot of conversation around curling clubs, and, and, and the fact of the matter is currently the Mariner Center Expansion Committee is, is, is really putting that at another phase, mm -hmm. not necessarily looking at that directly. However, there's obviously some um, requirement mm -hmm. for uh, refer, refer, uh, refurbishment or whatever. So we have the, we have a new request. I think this is would be the second time the Yarmouth Curling Association asks for money. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time I think we gave a, a fairly substantial bit because we were I think it was a condenser or something that had yes. broken. And so I think we were at one third and it was like eleven thousand. It was a, it was a very considerable amount. Sorry, I can I can recall. And then we have the Barrington one, which is a new one. Um, so I don't know if you want to think about those two together, like you want to do, like I don't have any information around how many residents from Argyle participate in one or, or the other. Well, I would say there's probably more, um, out of the two current clubs, there's probably more from Argyle that would use the Yarmouth one than the Barrington one. That's just my. There's a lot of I, I people know, in our in our area community area that goes to that Barrington. That goes to Barrington. And there, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Anything so. from the Argyle River or Baptic River, whatever, would go Barrington. Would go, go the other way. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I'm almost embarrassed to say this because it sounds political, um, but it should be noted that the municipality of Barrington contributed last year to the airport. Yes, exactly. Which aided us all. Exactly. And that amount was 
a little less than ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So while it is new and sometimes it's hard to introduce new mm-hmm. into the mix, um, I just I want to make sure that you're fully informed. I'm, I know I'm treading a line here. I'm not trying to influence your decision. I'm just simply trying to no, inform your decision. I wanted to know that. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. good. The the Nova Lumberjack Society is that is that the same? Um, we had a presentation last year from the they had a lumberjack um, in Barrington. Yeah, we gave more to them than we gave to the to the uh, curling club. And one I was looking at, and I know I believe. By what I heard here this evening, it's a line item here now, and maybe I'm wrong, but the Bay of Fundy Sea Kayak Society, are they a for-profit? No. They're not? No. Because you can have societies that are for-profit as well. Um, I was just wondering. It, it, um, I, I'm not aware of them being anything other than non-profit. Okay. They've been, this would be the third or fourth year that we would have supported this mm-hmm. particular event, mm-hmm. most of which is marketing. Um, I think the, the history of it, and I'm just saying this because, yeah, because no. it, was, it preceded, uh, preceded your, your uh, election, was uh, uh, it's, it's, it's hosted almost entirely in the municipality of Argonne, mm-hmm. and um, it is not one that gets a lot of funding from the other municipal okay, uh, yeah. partners. So our amount is unusually high mm-hmm. for that type of event that has been announced. Now I think they host it every two years, so we don't actually do it every year. Yeah, because I believe the participants, they all pay to, they do. to partake in it. Yeah. Uh, just one year. Uh, we have received financial statements from that organization. Oh, funny thing, yes, I had it marked down here. Which we, we're, we're happy to provide you. Yeah, um, thank you. If you wish to look deeper, um, yeah. my my memory is that it's it's a fairly break even situation. Okay. Yeah. But Sounds good. Certainly, we'll get that. Thank you. If you're interested. So, is it? Are we going to clean up some of the the smaller numbers there? Yeah, I think so. And Add divide it up and give it to the current clubs. <laughs> I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. There's one hundred dollars so under the Southwest Pilots Association. They were only looking for two hundred. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I would put. I, know. I would put two hundred there. Yeah. 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 So where are we going to take? I can't. From? See, I, I when I shrink it down, I can't read it. It's too small. So when <laughs> I expand it, I I lose the ask to to what we've given. Oh, you're in the different. Yeah. Right here, okay. And see, I can't yeah. see it when it's Oops. small enough to. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody else is going to have to sort that in. <laughs> so, what I can do is without actually mentioning the names, I can mention the amount requested yes. and the average. Yeah. And then you can make a decision whether you want that to be a different number or not. Mm-hmm. So, the first one is ask 15239 given $300. Um, I would suggest that's that's a, a far kind of like miss. Mm-hmm. Um, so that Take one, that, that one really, mm-hmm. that amount of money is not gonna help. Which one was that? Sorry, Alan. It, it, the fifteen two thirty nine, asked fifteen thousand two hundred thirty nine, right in the middle of page two. The yeah. Okay. That's we're not giving them but zero. So you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tried to see and asked for 5000 gave them 200 Yeah, that would be another example yeah. of one that missed the, misses the mark. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, uh, yeah, we do actually fund the museum. Uh, actually, uh, we fund three. Mm-hmm. One, one that we co-own mm-hmm. and, and what well, we own entirely and the others are in Westport and Pumbyville. And they don't request funding from any other municipalities, do they? To the best of my knowledge. <coughs> so if it's the will of council, you just found another $200. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 
that's three and two, and you said we already had one, I think. No. No, no, you guys have five hundred dollars from that three and two. We the have five right keep. now. Yeah. Okay. Or did you guys want to bump them up to two hundred? The paddlers. I wouldn't bump it up to two hundred. They asked for two hundred. Give them two hundred. Well, honestly, there's not a big ask, <laughs> no. so yeah. Okay, so you have four hundred dollars <laughs> left. <laughs> Is there any more, Ellen? Well, the Southwest Nova Biosphere asked for a thousand. We need a hundred. Another one that kind another, of another hundred there. Stands out. Yeah. And did we, yeah, we, we addressed the shark scramble. Yeah. Uh, the scouts, they asked for 500. Why don't we give them their 500? You guys want to do that? Say something? I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm missing what we had thought. I thought we were looking for money to give to the To the curly clubs. That's what I had understood. <coughs> we were looking to see if we could not the... So we're going to give to both or just to one? Well... I, it's, I suggest splitting. There's so little money here to, mm. to get. To get the item. Mm -hmm. so, so the curling, so so right now you've got six and two for a total of eight hundred given, and how much do we have left? Three hundred. Five hundred left. With five hundred left. Yes. Yeah. Seafood and wine extravaganza. They asked for fifty five hundred. We gave them two hundred. That's another two hundred, really. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. seven hundred. It just doesn't make sense. Permit me to just point out that the Kentville Bicentennial Society, I, the, the 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 logic around the uh, what was it? There was another celebration here. There was another one that we bumped up. Uh, oh, it was Nakiel. So we bumped Nakiel from 900 to 1500 yes. to consider it as a festival because it was a one-time celebration. Right. The Kentville Bicentennial Society would also fall in exactly. that same definition. Sure. So if you're if you're going to continue that logic, you're short a hundred there, because we yeah. gave them fourteen. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I I would say probably that give them at 15. Least give them fifteen. Mm -hmm. So it gives us six hundred left. So and, and three hundred more each to each. Yes, yeah. their uh, their festival is not going to be until next year, yeah. but they're applying ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And they could apply again, like next next year for the same event. I think everybody's lost interest on this one. Yeah. So we have six hundred left. So are we going to give that to the curling clubs? Is that yeah. the plan? Yeah. Yeah. Divide so yeah. it up. Yeah. Let it. We give it to the curling clubs yeah. and. Pick call it a day. Yeah. And then I approve that. We approve the suggested grants allocations as amended in the last 20 minutes. I'll second that. Motion. Okay, so moved and seconded. Any other discussions? So, so permit me just yes. on the motion for yes. us, for, for budget purposes, um, it would be good if we could say the total amount in the motion, which I believe is close 55. 55. 525. 525. 525. Sure. 525. Sure. 525. Sure. 525. Sure. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Question. Question called. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aren't you minded? Carried. Good. And you're efficient. So. Item 9 for decision. RFD Municipal Building Budget, April 2019. There's a four page attachment. And if you want to go through that, with, you've all had a chance to look at it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. yep. 
it's a request to up our budget, really. Yes, uh, up and sideways. Yeah, technically. Uh, so, as I mean, I'm not going to go down the historical road of, of missing the budget mark initially. I think we've we've discussed that, uh, and so leaves us in the position where um, our the right page here, forgive me. Uh, so it, to the point where our, our, uh, our lead consultants, uh, the architects, um, need a little bit more understanding of what's happening. So where we started with the community was we set a range of between 2.4 and 2.75. That was before net zero energy. Mm -hmm. And it was assuming that the entire amount, or virtually the entire amount, was coming out of capital reserves, yes. okay? So this project has changed quite drastically since we've gone out and done that. So we had changed the budget to 3865, and that was, our hope was that that would include the costs of net zero. Uh, it did not. And so we're, we're in this situation where we're going to make tr uh, significant changes to the design of the building, which will be required to bring us in the budget range. So my, I have a couple of concerns based on the work thus far. First of all, I think where Wild Salt is bringing us around the, the complexity of the building will save us money. They are changing their material strategy, so they're backing off on some of the higher end materials. So their initial philosophy was to uh, spend more at the beginning and have it last longer, right? And so they are changing that strategy slightly to have not as high level quality materials. Uh, however, obviously not the lowest level of, mm -hmm. of, of uh, quality. So there is and, and a couple other changes would include um, the way that the roof looks and, and the way that the structure is, it's going to be simplified. There are going to be some elimination. Anyway, that's a lot of detail. Essentially, they're confident that they can bring it within a budget range. However, one of the things that, we're, that concern us is that part of the way that you would save money on a building construction is to reduce the square footage. And so staff has raised this as a, as a, I think, a legit concern mm -hmm. that, you know, we're, we are actually, uh, if I look at the activity of the municipality right now, it's as busy, if not busier, than it's ever been. And so the possibility of other downloads and other things that may come from the provincial and federal government may require us to have that space. And we don't want to be in a situation where we build something and suddenly it's too small within three or four years. So, so knowing that the residents and staff and council are very sensitive to the budget around this building, it uh, really pushed us down a road that brought us to, okay, well, we are, sh we are showing $1.1 million of, of federal gas tax on this project right now. Um, we have done some investigation <clears throat> Uh, with with the provincial and federal counterparts around uh, how how do costs uh, qualify for gas tax and we we've, we've got some very good news in that area so we're also my my other concern is that while 3.85 is a very decent number for budget uh, there was some misunderstanding about what that included I think council certainly felt like it included everything. Uh, but according to the architects, it was construction, uh, not construction and what, what I would call soft costs, which is um, construction inspection, HST, and other, other non-construction related costs that happen in these kinds of projects. So that can be a big difference. So we felt like we wanted to kind of split the difference in a way. So our, our goal was to protect uh, municipal dollars. And I think this recommendation achieves that. In fact, it actually improves anything that we ever said to residents around this project. It does mean that we're putting 
1.6 million and not 1.1 million in federal gas tax money. Uh, of course, when this information comes to my attention, the first concern I have is, okay, well, this magnificent gas tax account can't be without an end. Mm -hmm. So you have attached a, t I have attached for your uh, information, a 10 year projection of what the gas tax could look like. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of that is in your control. And, uh, but, it, but it shows that even with 1.6, we, we would still have a sufficient gas tax to do other projects that we have on, on the list. So I realize this is a bit long, long winded and I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I'm doing the long windedness, I think less for council and more for those watching. Uh, so, so ultimately what we're saying is to, to, to kind of br bring it back to brief, is we're proposing an increase to the to the all-in budget, which would include which it would include the soft costs in our portion of HST, from three point eight six five to four point two one five. Um, the FCM Green Municipal Fund will be at approximately four hundred sixty-three thousand. So. Of the 4.2, almost 500,000 is paid for by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities because it's a net zero energy building. Mm -hmm. Another 1.6 will be applied to the project because it's a net zero energy building. So the remainder is 2.151 coming from capital reserves. That's lower than we ever said. Right. It will cost the municipal um, taxpayer. So I, it is for that reason, um, that I would recommend that while we're increasing the top line, we're actually decreasing the municipal contribution towards this project. I would recommend that change to give us the comfort to be able to build something at an appropriate size. Yes. I believe that that should be sufficient and the architects have a responsibility to work within that number. And based on the changes, I can't see why we can't get there. Um, I, I hate to say that out loud, because there's always uncertainty around projects of this magnitude, but we've really made a lot of big changes to the project. Um, so, so my recommendation would be to to uh, revise the budget for the admin building construction uh, to 4.215 and to increase the federal gas tax allocation to 1.6. And I would also ask that council hold our architects accountable by asking for the, the consultant to provide a revised design and breakdown of the budget costs considering the amended budget for your approval. So basically you're saying, here's the number, you break it down. Right? So it will be their responsibility to break it down. How much of that is construction? How much of that is soft costs? How much of that is you know, X, Y, Z? Right? That's their expertise, that's their responsibility. So a couple of things I also wanna mention around this uh, increase in budget request is that it does not include any costs that we've already incurred. It would include, however, any architect or engineering costs of redesign. This includes that number. So, that, that, so you're basically giving us permission to, in, in, to, to, to invest in that as well as part of the, uh, of the project. I just want to be very clear about that. Um, and um, I guess I'll stop there and, and if there's any Concerns or questions or comments? I'm, I'm certainly open, open to that. Questions? Anybody? Um, more comment that I'd like Alain to explain. Uh, we all know what gas tax is, and we've mentioned a lot. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that don't know what we're talking about when we're talking about gas tax. But would you explain Absolutely. how we get the, why we get gas tax? Right. And oh. it's a new. Well, it's not really new, but it's it's pretty recent new revenue that municipalities receive. Right, I'm happy to do that. So it was a federal government decision about, I'm gonna go with seven or eight years ago perhaps, maybe even longer than that, that uh, revenues generated from gas sales across the country would be set aside for municipal projects. So it is a federal program that is, uh, uh, that gets and, and the funding is is a permanent funding situation. So, how, while it is permanent, we have agreements that say, you know, from 2014 and 2024, this is your gas tax agreement. So in 2024, we'll have to 
the province will renegotiate with the federal government at the time regarding a new 10-year uh, or whatever year program. So the program funding is intended to be permanent. I would suggest that with this current um, uh, federal government, uh, they made a one-time commitment to top up our gas taxes. So that would reflect a strong commitment to funding municipal governments directly. So the, the thing about the federal gas tax is it's one of the only funds that doesn't flow through the province. The province negotiates on our behalf, but the money comes to individual municipalities. It is federal money. It is not paid for by municipal taxation dollars. Uh, it, is paid, it is taxation dollars. So I always want to spend that money over anything that we save that is municipal money because uh, we get an annual amount of $360,000 uh, that we can apply to a list of eligible projects. Not every project is eligible. So because we're doing net zero, it increases the eligibility of this fund to this project. And from the, to the best of my knowledge, um, the incremental or additional costs associated with the construction of this kind would be 100% eligible. And all that would be required is the architect to say, yes, that was an additional cost that we had to put into the project. So that is, so, so it is important, I think, for people to understand that this is federal money, not municipal money. But it is municipally controlled. Okay. Any other? If not, we have a suggested motion. If anybody wants to make that motion. I'd be willing to make that motion that we revise the budget for administrative building construction construction inspection to four million two hundred and fifteen thousand and to increase the federal gas tax allocation from one point one to one point six million. So I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a few points to make. Um, first of all, um, the report you gave us prior to making this decision, uh, Alain, was, in my opinion, well done and informative. And it spells out the facts I found, how we got here, why we got here, and quite likely why we needed to move forward with this. Um, I feel as if, if that building is what we want, um, the suggested motion is the logical thing to do, and I can see why you would make that motion to second it. However, I have a few concerns, um, mainly uh, uh, our CEO raised that staff would have concerns regarding room, and staff is something I've felt like we really have to keep into consideration moving forward, because although we're elected officials, we're not going to work in that building, uh, nowhere near an amount. As staff will, and you have to keep in mind um, that we have to make the right choice. However, I've heard politically, I've heard both sides of the spectrum. I still hear, "Why do you guys need a new building? You don't need a new building." And I mean, that's just ludicrous. Anyone who says that hasn't walked in here. Um, was it like two years ago? I walked into our deputy clerk at the Times office and it was like raining on his computer, like mm -hmm. ruined his computer. I mean, the basement is seven feet tall. Is it not? Is it seven? It's not eight. In most places. It's yeah. Similar. It's what? Yeah. Yeah. So, for the naysayers that go that far, the, the, there's no validity to that. However, I've heard, um, you know, no matter what it costs, build it right. I, I, I see validity to that point. I think, I, personally, I'm a little more frugal than that. And I find we're tipping. There's been a series of unlucky events, but we're tipping closer to that side of things than, than don't build a new building, and I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable with the numbers. Um, because I feel like there's an opportunity, and again, I, I, I'm not often the best counselor to speak on this because I'm not part of the building committee, and, and I know there's hard work being done there. And as I said, this suggested motion is, is the best motion you can make, and the, the research was done, in my opinion, um, to the best it could be given the circumstances if we want to follow this route but I'm under the feeling that if we just had a rectangular building that had all the space and needs and necessities that staff needs but on a more 
simpler platform, we could stay within our, our, our budget that we originally had. Now, the complications that would follow going back to the drawing board, I get, are, are serious. However, I'm thinking I'm falling more along those lines than moving forward with um, what's happening here. Now, I'm, I'm open to hearing why I'm wrong. I'd, I'd love to be, you know, told why this is the better of the ideas. However, I feel like if we simplify the building, um, every time you add a 90 degree corner in a building, every time you add a corner in a building, you add costs, right? Um, it's a beautiful building, and I think, given the fact that it'll be visual, I, d I do feel like it has to be a visually appealing building. However, um, I'm sensing from the community it's a bit more on the extravagant side than it needs to be, and it's raising concerns with me. Aren't we changing that, though? Those yeah, I can, I can perhaps... There's things I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Have, and yes. I, I, let, let's, uh, first of all, um, it... It absolutely, under its current design, will not meet our budget parameters. End of story. So you're absolutely right. And any community member that's saying that it looks extravagant, the tender proved that it is extravagant. So there's no, there's, there's no argument uh, uh, around that particular piece. Now before you keep going, I'm aware that you're making changes to, to make it yes. simpler. It's my concern is, are they going to be enough? Yeah, well, here's the, here's the and, and that's a legit uh, concern. Let me just raise a couple of examples of what is happening that might alleviate that concern a tiny bit. So first of all, the, the architect negotiated with the lowest qualified bidder and based on certain minor changes was able to drop the original bid about, I'm going to say about 700000 Okay, now that's obviously, um, it still didn't meet the budget at the time, which is why we're saying we need more than just changing, switching this out for, for, for that. Um, the major changes that we're doing include, um, to your point, the elimination of all those com complex corners. So the, the three roofs, the dorm, what dormers or whatever you want to call, some people call them that, I, I don't know if that's the actual uh, formal uh, name, those will be eliminated. So many of the concerns around the roof and the complexity around the roof will be eliminated. It will be a, a much simpler roof design. Um, also, we will be bringing in the council chambers from its outer kind of uh, the ankle, I guess, for, for lack of a better way to describe it, uh, of the building and try to bring it back on the foot. So that the complexity around the council chambers presented a significant a premium on the price. So if we bring it in, it will bring down the price considerably because it will simplify the construction. The materials choice is much different. Um, we are making changes to the landscaping, making things a little smaller, a little bit more compact. Like I said, every every little thing uh, does make a difference. I, I'm very I'm, I'm confident that those changes will make a big difference. We are eliminating things like bathrooms that like there were duplications inside the the, uh, in the design that we are eliminating. Um, I feel comfortable that we could be still within the original budget range. However, I'm not confident that, that we could hit the 3.865, which is why I'm suggesting the, the, uh, the increase because of the... In case you are... Correct. Now, clearly, our objective is to be below that number. I think what we presented was, let's make sure we don't have to come here again. That's number one. That's one of the reasons why we've done this. And, and obviously, we want to work it down to the, to the lowest number while providing us a quality building that, that isn't as extravagant as what a lot of the pictures out there are showing currently. And I think that, you know, it's, it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation, right? If you don't tell the architects what they have to work with, they can't design you something. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is say, okay, look, you have up to this number now. Make sure you fall n no higher than this number or there's going to be trouble. Uh, but really, we want to be at the 3865. Um, and so we wouldn't have to come here again, hopefully, uh, to, to address that. So I, I'm, 
I know that's not going to address every single one of the concerns that you've raised. But well, um, but you, you have addressed some. And as I mentioned, given the circumstances, given the architects that we have, given what the building looked like, given what we're changing it to look like, the report you prepared and the suggested motion you suggested using gas tags and, and the way you, you've, you've suggested we use our funding is what I would do. I mean, it's, it's a logical thing to do, and I get why you would want to make that motion. However, I, I'm really throwing a wrench in the gears here. Is, am I too late in speaking up and saying this? In a sense, yes. I mean, yes and no. These concerns were raised throughout by all of us. Um, however, I feel like we're, we're maybe going down a road where things get a little more complex, and I know we're trying to cut it down, but I do have worry about the, the retendering. You know, I'm nervous about that, whereas if you, again, I've heard the point that build it right no matter what it costs, because it's going to be a focal point in Tuscan, and we should, we should have something that you're proud to look at, but at the same time, I've always been a little more frugal than that, and I'm thinking when we're using this gas tax, this additional up to close to four hundred thousand that we're suggesting is is that correct? Almost four hundred thousand today. It's it's a five hundred thousand thousand increase in the gas tax, but it's a two hundred thousand decrease Increase in capital in, in the reserve. So it's not just putting all that money. And, and I respect the decrease in the reserves, and, and I mean it is gas tax. However, it's gas tax that could be allocated on other projects. Correct. So, I mean, it's not, it's free money, but it's not. I mean, we could be using it in other places. So, again, square footage is my main concern. Staff needs room to work with. And I'm concerned with downsizing. I, we have to be sure staff has the right, the right tools to do their job. However, extravagant decorations aren't necessary. I don't know if that's the right word I should be using it, but. There's some things that are necessities and some things that are wants, and I'm afraid we're gonna lose. They get blended together. So I, I can't support this motion here. I don't have a whole lot of options what I would suggest you would do differently other than completely looking back at the drawing board. Um, but I have, I just have concerns with the numbers is all. Mm -hmm. I just wanna make my vote. And when are we going to be getting a look at the new design? Once Wild Salt knows the budget that they have to work with, Oh, so they haven't changed the whole lot. They have, they have changed a lot of, like, to the point of extravagance, most that's, of that has been completely I mean. eliminated. That's right. Um, they will be coming back with a much more uh, basic design. Design building. Wh which is basically, I think, your concern. And I think, hopefully, what we see, I, I agree with you, uh, you know, comes over long. I, I agree with that. I've, I've said that all along, that do we need all these fancy, you know, because that's that's the main concern that I've heard ever since that plan went out to public. Why do you need such a fancy building, right? But maybe what they're going to change might might be exactly what you and I are, what, what you're saying. Where, where it will be more of a basic building. We can't, we can't change, I don't think we can, we can downsize as far as the size of the building. I think it's small enough, and I, I, I would say probably that some of the offices are just barely big enough as it is, right? And we need all the offices that, we, that we're putting in there, right? As far as the budget, and, I've, and that's something I've always said. When people say, well, you know, when we started this, we started with 1.75 to 2 point whatever, if I remember correctly. It was 1.85. I, I know it was low yeah. when we first started. But we've increased because we knew that that was never going to do it. But when people see that we, we were talking about in the range of the 2 million, 2.5, whatever, and they see something come out and we say, well, our budget is 3.85. Well, that's not what you told us. But we have to be able to explain why the 3.85 is there without increasing what we said we were gonna spend from our own coffers, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's what we have to be really, really careful in, in, in selling. It's, it, it doesn't come from that, that 
three or four million doesn't come from the actual reserves of the municipality. They have to know that. And you're right. It's still money that we could use somewhere else. It's, regardless of how you look at it, it's money that we have, right? Whether it's gas tax. The only thing that we don't have is that FCM Green Municipal Fund. If we don't build, if we don't build a net zero, then we don't get that, right? So that that's free money. The rest is you can't you can't say it's free money because it's money that we could use somewhere else. However, my view is that we're using it in the right place. That that's just my view, right? So anyway, that's what I had. That's all. And I had in the to original say. budget, when the first yes. budget came out, the yes. net zero part wasn't in there. No, so it wasn't. That's, that's a huge. Of course, it's a huge, it's a huge chunk of it. Yep. Yes. And like you said, we do have some funding for that. I understand what you're saying. The numbers keep changing. It's, yep. it's, it's almost like a target that you don't know where to shoot at. And it's, it's, it is, it's hard to kind of, it's a hard pill to swallow, but do we start from scratch? Do we throw in the towel and, and start all over again? I don't know if that's no. the best option either. I think in the long run, I think we should listen again to see what Wild Salt has to say, um, I, I think we've, there's been lots of conversation going on between Wild Salt and, and the office um, staff, and I guess we would, like to see, we would like to see a less complicated, I mean, had they been able to build the building they showed us for what we had originally said, Fine. I was all for that, mm. it was a beautiful building. Same here. But we're seeing that that's not the case. May I yes. comment on the potential building size uh, decrease? Uh, for the footprints, uh, some of them is space that we lose, or it's more considered optimization. Uh, office spaces are proposed to increase, so we have more space in our workstations or offices, so there's a bit of a miscommunication too between office office and workstation. Mm -hmm. They're proposing workstation, so it's individually workstation where you do all work. And there's offices that where you uh, have room for meeting with, 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 the, with the public and other people, so they have work room settings. So there's a little bit of difference, what we didn't understand, understood very late in the game. And other changes, proposed changes are losing uh, a hallway space that we only use for passing through. So it is more of an optimization of space that we're using. The usable space that's necessary to do our work is increasing. Mm -hmm. The space that we're gaining for meeting with public uh, boardrooms, all that stuff increases. What we're losing is hallway space. That's what they're proposing so far. So if we talk about small footprints, I understand it sounds, uh, doesn't sound in the direction we want to go. Mm -hmm. But it's an optimization of the space, how we use it. Mm -hmm. this is it. Anybody else? Yes. I just feel as though when I made this motion, I felt as though there was a lot of study that went in to what Alain wrote here, her CAO, oh, sorry about that, wrote here for us. And uh, I just, you know, we can pass the buck or whatever and say, you know, that building was out of what we were ready to pay for and all that at the first what was designed for us i feel as though as a council we underestimated how much this building was going to cost us from the first mm -hmm. and when we put those figures out there to the public they said oh wow that you're getting a new building for two million dollars or so and got everybody hyped up on it but i feel as though we have to take some of that blame as well because there was just no way we were ever going to put that building up yeah or practically any other building for a municipal office for $2 million. And that, so I just, big reason I made this motion, I just want to see it get on. Uh, I don't think any of us ever said build it nice no matter what the cost. We always said we want a nice building, but I, we, are, we are, you know, uh, very conscious as to what the cost is going to cost the taxpayers. It's as simple as that. But at the same time, I, I don't know if we're in a position where we should start right from scratch again. Uh, we have, I would say, don't know if we have a foundation 
in right now, but I feel as though uh, we may have a start of one um, and go from there and work on it, you know, and, and hope. That's the only thing I was a little bit leery of. I hope when I made this motion that we are not going to be back here uh, in a couple of months' time saying, no, we need more money, because at the same time, it has to stop somewhere, and so we have to show people, the public, that we are... Um, trying to do the best we can with, you know, the money we have to work with. But at some point in time, they'd have every right to come here and say, come on, you know, where does it stop? Mm -hmm. So I'm honestly hoping that we went a little over this time and we'll say we've come in a little under, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, and I don't... It won't be over. Them. If you give them this number, they're going to they're gonna scrape it. We all know that. It won't be under. No building error. But at the same time, it's better, I guess, than scraping it than going over. Yeah. I'm just thinking if we would have given this numbers in the past, any building they could have showed us, none of us would have said that's it. None of us would have said that by looking at plans. You, you can throw a few shrubs in front of a building and make it look nice, but I think if you would have said, you can build that and stay within the budget, we'll be happy. So now we're trying to downsize it, and I think we're going to be right on that fine line. I'm just concerned. If you had one long rectangular building, with a couple of shrubs and a nice rock face on the front, make it look nice. Just one long rectangle building with the same square footage and the same uh, potential, business potential and efficiency as these rooms that are currently in this building, we'd stay within budget. I'd, I'd like, I'd go ahead, but I'd like to address that. Mm -hmm. but go so, ahead. so and under what you would like to see happen, are you still staying with the net zero? I'm fine with net zero. Okay. Totally fine with net zero. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and I appreciate uh, Councilor Musa's point with selling that to the public. That was an opportunity that came that, that made total sense. And yes, it, the, the cost of the building is way higher. However, we're getting a lot of the funding and that. No, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, I'd like to hear what Tia Musa has to say, actually. Um, I think you'd be surprised what the cosmetic changes that you're suggesting, how much little impact it would have really? in total. The biggest driver of cost in this project is, in fact, the net zero. And so, and that's, that's why the gas tax can be allocated in, in, its, in the extent that it's doing. Mm -hmm. I think that if we didn't have the 500,000, and I'm just going to be as plain as plain can be, if we didn't have the $500,000 from the SCM GMF, it would absolutely not make sense to recommend a net zero. We would have done a reduced net zero uh, capacity, right? So the thing is, is net zero energy is net zero energy, right? You can get very efficient buildings and not go all the way to net zero, mm -hmm. right? And so I think, I think uh, the reason why it still makes sense, and I will, I will say that this, this is a recommendation that's coming from the architects. It's certainly a recommendation that we also support because of the cost savings over the life of the asset. Like I think we said it was like $3 million over 40 years that it would save. Now, give or take 500,000, but still, mm -hmm. like, that's a big amount of money. So, so that piece still makes net zero uh, uh, energy uh, something that we should potentially strive for. It was certainly confirmed by the project manager that we had, uh, that we, we engaged for, for a minute uh, under Wild Salt. Uh, he said it's close, but it's, but it, it's certainly because you have the 500 or 463 technically, it does make, uh, it makes the number make sense, particularly moving forward. So um, I hear what you're saying, and in fact, what you might find is that the design that you have in your mind might be closer. You, you might, in fact, so. see that it, it is going to be a lot closer to that. Okay. Um, it won't be a square, the, like, you know, or a rectangle in the way that you're potentially picturing it, but the, a lot of the um, pomp and circumstance of the design w w will be eliminated. Um, and I know that does not necessarily change how you feel about the budget number. The budget number is, is still high. Uh, most of it is in fact driven by the net zero uh, component, which I would still recommend despite because of the no, same I do too. future. I do too. All right. Okay. Have we discussed this enough? Are we ready for the question? Question. Question call for. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contra-minded? Carried. But it is an important issue. 
important topic that we have to discuss. Yes, well, it is. And from my perspective, uh, I can I, I appreciate the 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 information. I appreciate uh, hearing exactly how people feel around this table around this project. Exactly. You know, this project did not go the way that we had no, planned. No. But there's two things that we need to remember here. One is the longer we wait, the more expensive it'll be. Yeah. No, I'm getting that, no. And, I mean, the cost of construction is just, That's right. you know, it is moving in the opposite direction, yes. uh, number one. But, the, but, but number two is that uh, uh, while we have set a budget that's slightly higher, we will be pushing for uh, the, the most changes possible to reduce the, right. you know, the, the flamboyance, if, for lack of a better term. Uh, we did ask for larger offices. I will say this out loud. We had 64 square foot offices. Uh, eight by eight. Eight by eight in some Ooh. cases. Uh, they were quite small. We, uh, they, the way that they are designed, it makes it sound really small. I shouldn't say it exactly like that and stop because the way they had it designed with the doors, there was a, there was a lot of room saved. So, but it was a very small uh, office. And um, so we, we made those changes and we, we made efficient, tried to make efficiency changes in the, in the design. So you will have the opportunity to look at and completely criticize, compliment, make changes to before it goes out to tender. So to your concern around budget, you'll have an opportunity to address it directly once you get a draft in front of you. Okay. Okay. Good. We'll move on. There's two another? motions as part of oh. that RFD. I'm sorry. There was two motions as part of that RFD, so we oh. moved the first one. We, we all moved to request the lead project consultant to provide a revised design and breakdown of the budget costs, consider an amended budget for council's approval. Second. Did you second it? Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded. Any questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Contraminded? Carried. Thank you, Ailey. I missed that one. <laughs> uh, the next item, National Building Code of Canada, 2015 Volume 1, Post-Disaster Building Exemption Status for New Municipal Administration Building. And this is for decision. So, do you need an explanation on that one? Because it, it, I'm, I wasn't sure what exactly what, what that meant. Uh, it, the request is, so um, this is a request in reference, it's probably not, well this is the new administration building. So I, my understanding of the request here, and, I'm, and I may have just misread it, is, is that we want to um, request that the post-disaster construction requirements uh, be exempted for this construction, otherwise the okay. cost will be through the roof. Okay, so is that your understanding, Ellie? It is, yes. Yeah. So the building code that John Sullivan has, he needs exemption status from council based on the building code um, reference that we have. Yes. Uh, because the new municipal building is not considered an emergency response facility because we have comfort centers potentially as well as EMO okay. locations. Uh, fire, rescue, and police stations and housing for vehicles, aircrafts, or boats, and communication facilities. So the new municipal building doesn't fall under those three, but he needs exemption status from the local municipality in order okay. to okay. make it official. I wasn't sure, it, you know, I thought that what, I. I didn't think you had to ask for exemption. I thought you you you, you asked for it if you you know what I mean? Like you that, that if you didn't ask or say you were gonna build that that you didn't need an exemption because you weren't gonna build it anyway. You're not obligated to build. Well with certain buildings you have to you have the council to. has to make a motion to, to exempt from okay. that status. And okay. so you, you'll be faced with that same decision when the Eelbrook Fire Department okay. goes into construction mode because okay. you'll be faced with that same yeah. that same exemption. I wasn't aware of that. So you need a motion so that's why I to sure. from yes. council to uh, exempt from post disaster to the new building, Correct. new municipal building. Yes. Is that what you need? Based yes. upon the above building code, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I need the motion. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Don't you mind it? Carried. Next one is cost sharing program 
regarding the birch drive for uh, paving, and that's cost uh, sharing with the TIR. It's a J class road, <coughs> and we have to we have to pay our portion. Well, um, yeah. I mean, I think what happened was we received a request from the residents that it was in deplorable uh, yeah. condition, and and at the time we had asked council with permission to apply for funding, right. not actually making the commitment right. whether or not we were going to execute that, not think, I mean, mm -hmm. we didn't realize what the probability of success was. Well, there you go. They accepted um, so they accepted it. So you still have the choice to agree to do or this this year it. or not. Exactly. Um, because they, they're only going to do the Birch Drive. They're not going to go around Riverside, Riverside Drive. I was on that road, uh, I was on that road this weekend, and you know, I mean, Riverside Drive has a lot of uh, potholes as well, and whatever for sure. Uh, to me, from what I from what I saw, Riverside Drive was probably in worse shape than. Which is which? As, where where as does one end? As, as you come off uh, uh, Highway Three Thirty Four, that's Birch. Yeah. And, and then where right, it takes like right a degree turn, so that's returns. where it turns into the river. Yeah, and, then, and it loops back to Birch. Mm. So they want to do just the straightaway down to the right corner. To the corner. Floyd, the it's 0.3 yeah. kilometers to the, to the corner. But they're saying, the letter says that they're not prepared to, to do both, but that we could reapply to do the, the, the rest of it at another, in another it's year. It's a star, it's bad there. Have we ever done this before? I don't remember. Really? Not since I've been here. No. It's the first time I've ever done Yeah. Well, probably back when it was done, Department of Transportation, or TI, it wasn't TIR then, Department of Transportation probably paid J class roads. So it would have been a, a, a service exchange that would have occurred in 1996 or 97. Okay. At that point, you became fiscally responsible for J-class class. maintenance. Right. They are technically still in ownership yes. from the department. Yes. And so when capital projects occur, well, clearly we wouldn't have had an occasion necessarily to, to, to do paving on these on these roads immediately after the transition. Right. Uh, presumably they were in reasonable condition at the time. Um, so this this is really the first time that we've ever really received a request to do mm -hmm. a J-Class. Yeah. And they are cost shared, just like this. I know it's done in other uh, communities. I know Barrington uh, has a list uh, as yes. well. I reached out and they certainly have um, roads that they cost share. This is gas tax eligible. I was just going to say, can we yep. like, where does that? It would be gas tax eligible. That would be 47.5 our, our share. It was in the 10 year project projection yes. thing. Yeah, and again, I didn't presume that you were going to say yes or no to this, but I just, if, I, right, I want yeah. to, to, to show that if you said yes, right. here's what it looks like. It That's is gas right. tax eligible. The list just gets longer and longer. Or should we quit you? Should, could, would. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. holy, that's another forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars that we have to find in the budget. Right. That, well, no, because it can be it, gas tax. It's gas, still, but it gas takes away budget. from something else. Yeah, yeah. it is. Wow. Would be in the gas yeah. tax budget. Yeah. So just remind council that right now you have about one point eight million in your gas tax account, and okay. you get three hundred and sixty a year. So you have managed to save some. In anticipation of some of the larger projects, yes. but uh, Councillor Albright is correct. The project list is growing. Yes, and it's regional right. and local. And that's not the only J class road no. that we have in our municipality. And as we know, like every other road that we don't have to cost share, they're going to pieces, same as the J class roads. So, so we don't have a strategy on this type of uh, replacement. Right. Um, this, is a, this is a happen to be, is it okay if we ask? And right. the council said and yes. They, and, and they said yes. <laughs> and then they said yes to our ask. Oh, now what, what do we do? <laughs> no, I think my point to the municipal building was that 
had the building remain under budget, we'd have money to spend on stuff like this. We own a part of that road. The road is deteriorating. Yeah. I'll make the motion that we do it. We have a second there. I'll second that motion. Okay. Discussion. The, the big reason I second that motion is I just feel as though if we don't start taking care of some of these roads that we are uh, responsible for, partly responsible for, that it will just get out of hand in all of these roads and that will go to pieces and we'll just won't have enough money to, to do anything for them. But right now, I feel as though we may be able to start, you know, maybe that's something we may have to look at, is a plan uh, in place to take care of some of these roads and that we'll spend X amount of dollars each year or whatever to, to put back on these roads. I'm just afraid we can't afford to do that. Can we afford to do that? Because yeah. like, when I think about the roads in our municipality, and if we have to start yeah. putting big bucks into, like, and I'm not saying that we don't, like, people deserve to have decent roads, but that's another provincial thing in my head that I feel like, here we go again. And I'm just thinking, like, I know even in my district, I don't say that they're J-class roads, but it's going to trickle down. I'm getting calls all the time about the roads in my municipality, and they are. They're in horrible condition. That's what I'm thinking. Can we afford to do that? But, but the, the roads... Are they J-class? No, 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 but, 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 but people don't understand no, I know. that all the time. So I know. that's, I know, I know where this is going to go. I know where the phone calls are going to go probably tomorrow. So, so can we make a list of all our J-class roads? We did. We, we, we seen did. it. I mm. think that we do have a list. Yes, we have we, a list. We've not analyzed, uh, and certainly we're not in the position necessarily to accurately assess the useful life of J-class roads. That's no. not our line of business. No we can arrange to make that happen. Um, the, the, the political question is, is a debate for, for political. I, I, would, I would add on, on the motion that's being uh, that's been put on the, the table, Birch Drive uh, does uh, connect to one of our business, uh, I should say, residential zones. Mm -hmm. So we still have I believe maybe two or three lots that could still be sold in that area. So I, I'm not, it, it, it's just, a, I'm not trying to sway a, a decision, I'm trying to inform a decision. So so this particular um, uh, investment would, would fall into Riverside Drive, which does have some lots that we, uh, we have sold some recently, but haven't, uh, haven't sold all of them. So if we approve this, would this be, so you said gas tax eligible, are we talking about the whole chunk, like now, right? I, I'm just curious how that would work. I, I, I'm, the, being the first time that we've actually received a, a, a green light on this, being the first time we've actually made this request right. and then had a green light, right. uh, I think it's just simply a billing. They do the paving mm -hmm. and they bill us. Okay. So it's there. It's 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 provincially led. It's it's basically a contribution from our coffers to theirs. Any more discussion? Are you ready for the question? Question. 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 Call for. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded nay. I guess it's it's approved. The only thing I would like to ask, being as though we're talking about roads and all that, um, I'd like to see us try and get some of the uh, supervisors or managers or whatever from TIR back here again. Because honestly, that is the biggest complaint mm -hmm. I get as counselor mm -hmm. is the roads, the shape of the roads, mm -hmm. and that the lack of salt, the lack of plowing. Yes. Uh, we had a couple of them sitting in here on the... Uh, might have been the 13th of September, I'm not sure. But anyway, they said, oh, call in, you're going to get tag numbers, and uh, we'll look into it. I have tag numbers here that I'm keeping track of. I've called, I've re-called, and, and nothing's happening. Not a thing. So as far as I'm concerned, if the people watching feel as though that we can do anything for them with Department of Highways or TIRs, they want to call themselves now, I'm afraid we can't because I don't know how much they can do for the people, so. 
it's just okay. fallen on deaf ears by the by the looks of it. This is an, for another a topic for another, for another. I know, but at the same time, we got to get this another time going. I think because mm -hmm. if not, it's just a topic for another time, and nothing. It looks like we're doing nothing to help them. Thank you. Well, we're doing what we can to help them. Well, maybe it's not, we, it's not our it's not our jurisdiction. All we can do is 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 report. If yeah. it doesn't get done, we've done our we've done our part. But maybe we should push a little harder then. You know, Let's make an agenda topic for it. Yeah. Okay. So would you Would you like for us to uh, reach out to the? It, it, it's, I'm hearing yes. it's the will of council oh, to have that happen yes, at should. the most recent council meeting. Is that what I'm hearing from? Yes. From when, this group. Years ago, and I don't know if it's happening now, the supervisor for the municipality of Yarmouth went to the meetings on a regular basis. Not every, not every meeting, but there was a schedule that he had to go to the meeting because that's what they had requested. And every three months or so, he had to go to the meeting and, and to, to hear their concerns and explain what had to be done. We never got that when I was there from our God. So. I think that's something that we should have on the schedule that on a, on a regular basis, whether it's three months, four months, that they can come here and explain to us and we can give them our concerns as well. There is no way something wasn't drastically different this year with plowing. Something was different, it has to be. That, that that manpower. Not, not as good? Yeah. yeah. But they didn't have the manpower. Is that, uh, no. We'll let them tell us, but it's that's some, something that's has something to be Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Sure. exactly. Sure. And I feel as though we have to get them in to tell us what's going on. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll get on. Are we we're okay with that? Just not my computer time. Next one is the approval of policy reimbursement for attending meetings and conferences. I, I went through this again, and item number 12, and I think I brought this <coughs> before, and I just want to clarify. When you're traveling to FCM, and there's different, there's different uh, for different zones, and I realize that, it, it says, that the conference, okay, $1,100, okay, for one, $1,100 will be provided to the council member or employee attending the conference to cover all of their travel-related costs, mileage, airfare, etc. I thought that mileage was not included. I thought we had discussed that and we had said that we still had mileage to go to Halifax to get to the airport. That you were paid the mileage to yeah. go to the airport. I I understood that as well. Yes. Well, yeah. this that says that it's included. It's it will included. it will cover all of their travel related costs, <laughs> mileage, airfare, etc. And I think that's the point I had brought up before. And at that time, it was said, "Oh yeah, that that's that's a mistake. That shouldn't be there." But then now I see it, it's still there. It's right there. That okay. should not be. I don't think there. it is. I, I think the mileage is supposed to be taken out. It is. In fact, I think there's another provision in in this policy that addresses that specifically, or at least I thought. Um, see. It addresses it when you go to the uh, uh, NSFM because it's always mileage. We don't fly to the NSFM. Mm -hmm. And it says that on every one of them. Yes. I've, I've looked this over too before and I've talked to Alain. Uh, we, we can go to 9.4 A, B, and just eliminate <clears throat> number 12.1, FCM conference expense payment. Uh, it's my understanding if you're going to a certain time zone, you get a certain allowance for basically airfare. Mm -hmm. If you don't use all that in your airfare, that's money left over in your pocket for another lack of a better term, that becomes taxable, right? If you have $1,100 to fly to the Pacific time zone and you found a super deal and got a ticket for But now you're not gonna get the 1100. Yeah. You're only gonna you're get gonna what get it costs what it you cost. for the ticket. Yeah, the lower cost. That, that's been, that's, that's another, that's, there's another uh, 
clause in there that you, you, you can get up to 1100, but if you spend 12, you're going to get 11. If you spend 9, you're going to get 9. Mm -hmm. You have to produce receipts now. And if you don't produce receipts, then it can become a taxable. That's the way I understood it. So why not, why not just adopt number 9.4, air travel for any conference other than FCM, and have the staff book the flights? Like, I don't understand why FCM is singled out. Like FCM was singled out because of the fact that, uh, to, okay, my, my understanding is that it was singled out because of, we used to get the same amount no matter where we went, right? Yes. Where, where we found that we couldn't, we couldn't fly in some of the areas for, for that money and it cost us a hell of a lot less than what we were given for others. So that's the, there's three sections there in 9.4. Uh, not 9.4, 12, sorry, 12. 12.1 A, B, and C. Yes, the initial reason why we separated the FCM conferences from general air travel, which by the way, we almost never travel air travel unless it is I don't. I don't that's remember right. it ever. I don't think I it's think ever happened. I think went to France or something once, I don't know. But yeah, and I think it was paid for by somebody, somebody else. else. Somebody else, yeah. Um, and so that's that's true. So there, so really, like since 2006, other than for, for a, tri a trip that was paid for by somebody else, we've never actually traveled by air unless it was for FCM. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, the reason why FCM was singled out was because initially we wanted to limit or, or cost control yes. um, the, the flights. Um, and, and I say we, council at the time, wanted that. So uh, the changes that we're proposing, we're proposing, um, we, we did intend on including the mileage as a reimbursable expense, exactly. not included in the 1100, 900, and 650. That's right. Those were intended to cover airfare. That's right. And airfare only. Yes. So there is a word there that should be deleted in your final if you're, if you're prepared to do a final. Yes. Um, I don't think anybody's going, oh no, that's not true, I was thinking of NSM. So, uh, so that was the reason why we showed it separate. It's the will of council. So whichever you want to do, I, I would, um, I find when it comes to flights, the practicalness of us booking the flights to suit individual schedules is problematic. Yeah. It's one thing to book a hotel because you know you're going to be there from X to Y. But the flights sometimes have a lot of personal uh, yes. arrangements, and sometimes, of course, uh, the spouses are joining, which, of course, the spouses pay, but then that depends, depends, depends. So I, I would, from a, a, an administrative perspective, caution against asking us to book the flights. Uh, but the warden is right. You, can, you, you don't have to do something special for FCM. You can just simply say it's the economy airfare. Uh, however, you know how it works, right? The economy airfare on day 30 is not the same as nope. day 10. Mm -hmm. nope. So it's hard for us to manage that situation and, and say, well, you waited to the last minute, so we're not going to reimburse you right. or, or et cetera. So we're, I think the point is we're trying to, trying to standardize that to some extent. Um, so when you book... When you book a flight, and you book it where there's no returns, like you can't, like it's, you fly or you die type of thing, you lose it, right? Yeah. To, to, to get to the, to get to the funding model that we have here. Like there's, there's, we'll use Quebec City, for example, there's no direct flights. I booked in January. And I watched it for a couple months, and I couldn't get <coughs> down to the to the suggested amount paid out for for an Eastern time zone uh, on the dates that we had to go. And I'm sure that's part of the problem is the dates, right? Mm -hmm. It's no good to go three days early and stay six days after. Yeah. So, um, to me, it's full of flaws. Like, there's there's. All other municipalities, I'm sure, book their uh, flights for the councillors going to FCM. You have a date you're leaving, you have a date you're coming back. Uh, with help from a councillor or, 
or the staff checking it out can find the best available flights for those two days, basically, is what it is. It's, it's not hard, in my mind. Um, I'm, I'm certainly getting the sense that you're not prepared to make a decision on this policy. Um, staff is happy to no, go back. No, I'm, I'm one voice out of six here, mm -hmm. so I yeah. mean, I, these guys, the rest can decide what to do. I just find it difficult sometimes. And, and we all don't go to FCM every year, and I haven't gone quite a bit lately in the last number of years, but when you do go, I don't like booking my ticket in my name at the cheapest possible price I can find it, so I would be covered under the policy we have to get sick or something happened that you can't go, then then you're not going to be reimbursed by the municipality, so you're out the money. That happened to me when I had to cancel my flight to my, my FCM to Ottawa. But don't you take insurance? Let's see that. Does doesn't, keep, keep, in, keep insurance book? doesn't cover just just the fact that you don't want to go. Yeah. yeah. But you were you actually owed the money or did you get a brochure for another flight? No, I got another flight, but it, okay. was, it wasn't. It, it, and you have it, to pay it, extra for that yeah. now. And, and yeah, exactly. Plus, uh, you don't get 100%. But mm -hmm. what would make a difference if, if the staff did it or if you did it? Because it would be, it, <laughs> then the municipality would lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, they would book the flight that was covered for reasons like that. That would be refundable. Yeah. I, I book non-refundable flights because that's the only way you can get within the perimeters we've set out for ourselves. Exactly. Because when you want a refundable flight, then you pay extra for that. It doesn't come free with the... And, and I know in this particular year with Quebec City, you can't get there direct. No. You're taking multiple flights. It's proving to be right away more expensive than the allowance we're trying to change in the first place. Yes. Um, our intention from a municipality's perspective would be that you're not out money by going to a conference. From that's what I thought I to say is, let's say, you know, I think the, what you guys are trying to say is, if the allowance was twelve hundred, you shouldn't get twelve hundred dollars regardless of what you pay for your flight. No, correct. You should get the different, like the lowest price. I think that's where you guys were trying to go. Agreed. But what I'm hearing is that you can't even the do numbers that. that are here aren't necessarily working. No. Is it that could, what I'm hearing? Yes, that, it could work for some areas. Yeah. But in this particular incident, the FCM, it's not working. And and I would say that you're you're right. I don't think that any any uh, 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 councillor travels to a, a conference to represent the municipality should be out of pocket money for at least. I mean, if they spend while they're there, that has that's nothing to do choice. with the conference. Yeah. That, that's one thing. Or or if I bring my my wife, and you know, you can't expect that we're both. You're going to be out of pocket money, but. I think that in a case like this, where you cannot find a flight for that for that amount, that and and we're saying that you're only going to get paid what you pay for your ticket. You should get paid for what you pay for your ticket if it goes over. And you know, make make a, a specific a, or, or special circumstances is what it is, right? Yeah. Especially uh, if you're choosing economy flights. It's not like you're flying first no, class. No, exactly. And, and that's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so from my perspective, I'm less comfortable uh, bringing this policy for your approval based on the feedback I'm receiving. Yes. Um, you, you are not rushed to make to do this. Uh, an approval on this. We will dig deeper and get additional information and we will seek your counsel before putting it back on the agenda. I think that's so, a good idea. Okay. Yes. Now, we had a subcommittee of policy development we haven't used recently because most of them were just cleanups. Yes. So this might be one where we would require both staff and council, a small group, to sit, to to sit, sit together, together and iron out some of the details. Exactly. And I would suggest strongly that you're, that the warden be involved mm -hmm. because the warden yeah. has had, uh, he, he has a lot of experience mm -hmm. in, in, yes. in this type of travel. Yes. So if, if you don't mind, we can just... So we can table this one table for, this. Another, mm -hmm. for another yeah. Uh, meeting. Do we need a motion to table, or I think it's appropriate to table a mo to to, to, to put a motion to table, so or to defer to to another. defer to another. Yes. I'll Good. make the motion that we defer this. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor. Aye. 
Okay. Don't you mind it, Carrie? Oh, you moved it. Oh, Nicole. Yes, it's been died. Uh, for over here. Thank you, and and forgive me for not having it uh, to you. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it right. Yes. For you. Destruction of documents. So after so many years, we can we can we can uh, destruct some. We can, we can get rid of some of the documents. Correct. Destruct destroy. is not really the uh, proper destroy word, maybe. Destroy. Yeah. Did I say go. destruct? <laughs> destroy documents. Uh, except there are some that we cannot destroy. Yes. So I was saying destruct instead of destroy. Sorry. We're we're raising this issue uh, because we do have um, uh, we will have um, one year further in yes. destruction. I think Ailey, if you have do you have any details? Is it John that has put this on? It is John. Yeah, we do it every year around this time of year, and there's an affidavit that I have as the motion in my minutes. And it's the same every year. So it's just mm -hmm. approval from council to be able to move. Struck the documents based Second. on the policy that's attached to the agenda. It's <laughs> moved. <laughs> seconded. Yeah. Moved and seconded. Yeah. Any discussion? No second, no sorry. Dis yeah. You did. Okay. Okay. No discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. So it's up to the municipal clerk to list these documents exactly. upon prior to destruction and that will right. be done. It, it did say destruction. <laughs> it did. It did. Yeah. 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 But you said something we're afterwards. Gonna, gonna destruct the documents or something. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Schmed Lacre, request for letter of support, Department of Transportation. So moved. Uh, seconded. Okay. There's a <laughs> there was a petition there. For reasons, but the reasons are, are pretty good. Were you going to take that, Ailey? Did you talk to Janine, or do we have to discuss it? It's moved and seconded, by the way. Yeah, it doesn't need to be discussed. I just it have to that I can pass around. It's pretty straightforward. No, it's, yeah. it's pretty. It's yeah. It's pretty straightforward. It, and it a letter of support Janine can take directly to Chris Dontremont, and he's right. going to hand it in. And he's mm -hmm. going to bring it in yep. to the Halifax uh, uh, office rather than do it through this office. So I'll draft a letter, and then I'll just get yes. normal process. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contraminded? Carried. Where am I here? Request for appointment of El Louis Boudreau, Louis Boudreau as building official and bylaw enforcement officer. And we had discussed that at our last meeting of what we, or did we, or did we, did we do that in camera? I wasn't sure. Um, well, it's it's it's, it's, it's probably now. Not, absolutely, Louis was internal uh, internal application for the building official who is the success, succession plan for John. Louis Boudreau was successful, and he will be trained in that capacity. We are now advertising for the wastewater uh, position. Okay, which was his former position. Yes. I would recommend that in order to conform to requirements that we need an appointment. Yes. Uh, for building official and bylaw enforcement officer for yeah. the and that has to come from you. And building official is is really uh, 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 part time because just to train him for for it's it's looking it's looking ahead. Yeah, I mean we're 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 naming him as the building official. He's actually not certified to do no and sign off on building inspection until he is certified by the the uh, the education right. So we need a motion for that. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that in order to confirm to legislation, legislative requirements that Louis Bud will be appointed as building official in training and bylaw enforcement officer for the municipality district of Argyle. Moved and seconded. The Department of building officials necessary for him to become full member with the association of building officials. Right. That's why. Exactly. Right. Okay. okay. Discussion? Question. Question called. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Undermined. Carried. First reading, amended Tuscan Water Wastewater Bylaw 30. And this is just uh, the first reading. We can't. Uh, there, there would be a motion required on the first reading. On the first reading. But it has to obviously go through the process of advertising. Exactly. Um, Hans is here to answer any questions or concerns you may have. The changes that have been made are highlighted in, in yellow. In yellow. Most of the changes uh, are cleanup 
there is one big reason why we're bringing this now. It's one of the steps necessary when we're putting a public road in to yes. the location of our admin building where int our intention is to put in a road and that road would be a public road. So it would be, uh, it, would, it would access the back lot as you have already indicated that that is a priority of, of this council. So in order to do that, we had to, in we had to expand the wastewater management district to include um, the proposed uh, location right. municipal road. So that uh, map is on page 20 of the attachment and you can see where it says proposed municipal road and, and the, the increased uh, uh, square footage or, or map that includes it inside the district. Without being in the district, we cannot actually bring the sewer. Bring it the sewer to, to that location. Move that we approve. I'll second that. Aren't you comfortable with this this document? I'd like to just yeah. Uh, so just mostly clean up. I add it's one provision that we're allowed to or the council allows to create a policy to deal with any technical details in, in the future, which makes the process a bit easier. I think uh, I just added a few clarifications on the definitions. Uh, I changed kind of. The application to connect, uh, the wording it says now there's a thousand dollars per connection fee, which is the original connection fee. Uh, it used to, well, used to be described as a connection fee as per equivalent unit, which which would in certain cases exceeds the two hundred thousand dollars. So some certain businesses have a higher usage, mm -hmm. so they would pay more for the basic connection fee, which is not what we're actually practicing. So this is just a cleanup that we only charge a thousand dollars per connection fee, not even it. Okay. Uh, also allowed for a temporary disconnection during construction, which wasn't in there before. So I created a schedule D, an application form to disconnect or temporary disconnect. And we have the option to waive the connection fee. Because originally, if you disconnect, uh, we had a few situations that there was accidental destruction of the property. They had to, they were forced to disconnect, and if they had to reconnect, they had to repay the connection fee. So this is just to help the residents in case they want to do changes to their property, to the building. So it gives them a, a provision to uh, not have to pay that as an unfair disadvantage. And then we cleaned up the map and uh, we included the property. The only thing I would like to point out is there's one property that's now included in the new management district, which wasn't included before. Because of the, just the distance of the way we run this. Uh, the district is 300 feet from the center road. The center of the roads in either direction is the sewer district. So it is required to hook up to the sewer if you're within the district. Now, with changing the, the map, one property in particular is, has now the option, or it would be required to connect. They're currently using an on-site sewer, I assume. Uh, so, there might be necessity to give them extension with the choice to connect or not, or not connect. So, the council should be aware of that might be a little of an issue. Either way, you can extend them and go around their property or we give them the option to apply to council to stay as is and not connect, or they wish to connect, it's totally up to them. So, well, not totally up to them, but we should leave it to the owner and include them in the process when we advertise. Okay. So there's motion, any dis any uh, questions? Or question. Question called, all in favor? Aye. 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 Don't you mind it, carried. Correspondence and core information. Develop Nova Scotia, shortlist for pre qualified mm -hmm. internet service providers. I'm just going to go through them. And if you. Municipality of Clare approval of funding for Stephanie St. Pierre. Oh, that's the. Uh, that was the. What we discussed earlier, right? No? Yes, that's yes. the confirmation that Clare yes. has given the full. Line. Exactly. Department of Municipal Affairs, Federal Gas Tax Program. 
Lyme Disease Awareness Month, March 2019 Building Permit Report, Mariner Center Management Authority Resignation Notice. Now, do we have to to reappoint someone? And no. Um, so this this was an interesting timing. So we had just put uh, a new counselor. Oh yes. As the member of the mayor. Then we thought that maybe we and we were scratching our heads to say, well, which which uh, individual are should we, we ask? And uh, just so happens that uh, one is no longer going to be living in the municipality and so he's, his resignation. He's so. I would suggest that there would be a motion to accept that resignation yes. that could be done here, along with a thank you for his service. Okay. Can we do that? We can do that now. We can do that, yeah. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 it. Carried. Waste Reduction Association of Nova Scotia Sharps Campaign Press Release. Water shortage proposal response from, from Minister Porter. We discussed that earlier. No wonder I couldn't find my emails, it was there. Letter of support provided to YASTA for the uh, Nova Scotia Music Week bid for 2020, 21, and 22. So, and I would just on that, yes. uh, Mr. Chair, I would just say that the decision to fund the music we bid uh, has not been made. We brought to uh, council uh, budget deliberations okay. because it's from a sister company. They right. don't have to apply to our grants to organizations process. But okay. if you recall, Neil uh, McKenzie did a presentation, and I believe it was a ten thousand dollar request that could be paid in two years. And if you yes. chose to do it over two, this would be year one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Letter from uh, Cheryl Gallant, Member of Parliament, regarding Bill C-68, her concerns. Street light for residential park. That would be me. <laughs> I put that on there because I just wanted to bring, them up, bring it up. They've applied for street lights in, the, in our residential park. And they were denied due to the fact that they didn't meet the, uh, uh, our, our, our policy on street lights. They still claim, I've gotten calls again, and they still claim that that corner, when you go down, you go down the hill, and then there's kind of a 90 degree corner that it's a little dangerous there at night. There's no lights, there's no street lights at all in the park. So they want to know, and apparently they were told that the only way they could get that was if we changed our policy to include. Now changing the policy, we have to be a little uh, careful, unless we're ready to, depending on how we change it, we would have to be ready to accept probably a lot more requests, depending on how we change the policy. Are we ready for that, or are we not? Don't we, yeah. Don't we have a dark sky designation? I was just thinking that. Yeah. And the and the light from Tuscan is starting to get brighter, according to Mister. What's his name? Tim 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 yes, but but it's not street lights. Uh, it depends on the kind of street lights that you're going to put in, mm -hmm. right? But still, it's still going to be light. There's going to be some light. Yeah. Yep. But but there's some light that doesn't affect the satellite designation, depending on the kind of lights, which is, which is uh, well, municipal of Heavy Yarmouth and the town of Yarmouth, I guess, were all kind of forced to put new lights. They were not the right lights. They are really, really not the right lights for, for that. They, um, it's, it didn't, it, they, they, they put them in because of the lifespan of these and whatever and the new technology, but it wasn't the type of light that the starlight designation would have liked to have seen. Anyway, I said I would bring it up again, whether or not there's any way that we can, we own the park, I don't know if that makes a difference. We have, we have one light in the, in the business portion of the park, I'm pretty sure. Okay, 
And I guess... That's ours? That's ours. Mm -hmm. We actually own the street lane? We have about four... We have about six. I'm going to go with six, six or seven. seven right right now. Now. But they're emergency. Most of them are for like emergency... Yes. Yes. We had three or four before we passed this policy. Yes. Uh, that were either taken over from... TIR or for whatever reason some of our own like yes. we have street lights on our own property yes. protecting our own property that we pay for uh, so the, the so the current street light policy says unless there is a, uh, uh, a considerable concern emergency uh, etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, we don't pay for those street lights right. it would it would be a residence residential uh, responsibility now the policy does not express any form of um, collaboration you know like so so for instance you know I'm sure there are some, might be some individuals that say hey look we're, we're willing to pay something for a street light but we don't want to have individual street lights everywhere yeah. and we can't we can't force a location of the street light if it's not on our property that's right so so some may want to see that uh, the policy doesn't address that yeah. uh, some may want multiple street lights uh, for sidewalks the policy does not address that right now Policy doesn't allow that to happen. We have had two requests, I believe, two maybe three that we approved. One was in Wedgeport at the crosswalk for the school, where the crosswalk is painted every year. Uh, they felt like uh, there's a you know high speed traffic, school kids. So and and the RC, RCMP. One of the criteria is that the RCMP says, you know kind of comes in and says, yeah, there's you know there, there's a, there there could potentially be a danger associated with that. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think the request of the residential park of Tuscott failed, yes. is that there's very little traffic there. Yes. And so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting they're wrong around the corner. The corner mm -hmm. can be a little, you know, that's right. it, it can, it has its issues, right? Yes. Um, so certainly they, that's a legit concern. It just doesn't meet the criteria of our street okay. policy. Okay. So for me, it doesn't meet the criteria and I actually agree with putting street light there, but I agree with putting street light in a lot of residential areas, right? And I feel like it's something we should look at in the future, if mm -hmm. we can. It goes along, for me, it goes along with sidewalks. Something I feel like we should be looking at. Be looking at, yes. Yeah. I mean, for aspect of alternative, for the road danger, it would be bollards or streets, like signs that are reflective to at least mark the edges of that road. So if on a street light, you could have signs out there which are road <coughs> maintenance, it doesn't cost any money. Right. Or setting it up. Right. To just to mm -hmm. address that these concerns and make the world safer for them. Right. And, and what Councillor LeBlanc said, I'll back him up 100% there. I honestly, I spoke with uh, CAO News here a week ago or so. Uh, I've been getting more pressure uh, from people down home that want some street lights along the sidewalk and in certain areas of, of West Pubnico and Lower West Pubnico. I plan on holding a public meeting the first or second week of June, if all goes good, to get input, public input, and to let them uh, guide me as to what they'd like me to do for them or what I may be able to do for them. So I, it, it will definitely be coming up in the near future, I believe. Mm -hmm. So. And my think, concern talking to rural municipalities that do put up a lot of street lights. I believe Barrington's one of them, and it's a very costly, costly endeavor because everybody's going to want them. They're going to be wanting them in every district. They're going to be wanting them where they're not needed, and it's just opening up a can of worms. We've got a way for years. If people need one bad enough, they can put it up themselves, which they do. I'd, I'd like to know now how many municipalities in uh, Nova Scotia don't have street lights over how many have street lights. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, if, if we were to do street lights like the municipality of the Army, and what they do is, is if, if, if there's a, a bunch of houses, they won't put one at every, every location. They, they, they'll skip a pole. That's right. And then when there's a whole section, when there's no, there's no houses, there's no street lights. Exactly. Yes. Anyway, you know, so it doesn't look like we're going to be getting a street light for these people. I, you know, I mean, if, I, I think changing the policy is, can be, can put us in a situation where all of a sudden we get 
we get a lot of requests for for street lights. Yeah, and and the dark sky designation, I'm, I'm all for that, and I respect that 100. percent But I feel as though for safety now, security reasons, uh, there has to be a happy medium somewhere. Well, well there can be because it's you it's know? a type of light that, that yeah. that's installed. Yeah. It's not it's not to put these great big lights that are light mm -hmm. in the sky. It's just it's mm -hmm. you know depending on the the the, the strength, uh, you know. Lumens. Lumens. Yeah. Yeah. Strength of the bulb and whatever. Yes. Uh, so uh, Tim Doucette t uh, went to great pains and, uh, and effort to research and, and bring to our attention <clears throat> what, he, what is a lighting or dark sky bylaw. Yes. We've received legal opinion on, yes. on it. Uh, we technically cannot enforce a bylaw. Yeah. However, any discussion on streetlight policy should, uh, in, in my mind, because of our investment in the dark sky, really should incorporate what that bylaw is saying and, and, uh, and say, if you're going to go down the road of, of investing in streetlights, which has not been identified as a priority this year. No. I just want to make no, sure no. that everybody exactly. is aware of that. If that's something that's going to come up in the future, that needs to be a decision of council because we're moving on priorities. We've got yes. like three big ones we've got yes. to move. So if you wish us to change the streetlight policy, um, certainly it's, it's a motion away for us to look at it. But I'm just warning you that that's not on the higher priority no. and would have to, other things would have to be shifted or changed exactly. at the will of council for us to hit that one fast. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, by all means, if there are public conversations around streetlights in communities, I'm not suggesting that, I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that what I'm saying would influence that in any way, shape, or form. My only concern would be it's going to take us time to do any sort of major change because we have to look at the fiscal implications mm -hmm. of a change in policy, number one. Number two, we have to consider dark sky. And number three, we have to understand what the, what the community is willing to pay for. Exactly. That's, That's right. Because That's right now it's not incorporated in your residential taxes. Exactly. But the, I believe, though, if a community wanted it and went with an area rate, um, they'd be able to get lights if they wanted so. And certainly, if it was a hundred percent cost recovery or virtually a hundred percent cost recovery on the service of that, um, that would, could certainly inform your policy. Exactly. And and so council may be okay with it mm -hmm. as long as the users are paying for that service. Yeah, but then you know it begs the question: Who is the user? Yeah. Right. Is it the person living on a sidewalk, or is it people using the sidewalk? How does that get determined? So I, as you can imagine. It's one thing to change the policy, it's another thing to answer those yeah. questions to get to that mm -hmm. place. Yeah. And I respect what council is thinking about and mm -hmm. you know, safety, security, all of those things are very, very important. And so yeah. um, if you wish to change priorities through the year, um, we're gonna, it, it, will, it will be something that we'll have to okay. look at in the, in the yeah. near future. The next one is mobile dewatering truck garage construction and that's a tender. We opened up the tenders. There was only two bids. And I guess this is public. Yes. Who, who bid and whatever. So we had one from Graham and we had one from Garyan. Garyan was the low bidder. And have they been notified uh, that they were uh, bidder? Yes, they, they've, they've been notified and uh, we are the recommendation coming from Hans to myself and to you is to deal with the low bidder and negotiate, negotiate. the price because the price is currently uh, higher than what higher than thought. the original budget number. Yes. So we believe that there's a little bit of room. Yes. Um, to just to construct a little bit less expensive. So we don't need a motion on this at this. It's point. for information. Information yeah. only. Okay. Stand. Uh, Joint Municipal Fire Service Committee Bulletin Training. <coughs> Unsightly waste bins. Yeah, um, I brought it up uh, a few meetings back, but I missed the last one, so we pushed it back to today. Mm -hmm. uh, I give you all some time to think about it. I had a resident raised to me, and it was just one resident, however, uh, I thought maybe there was some validity to it. He wanted to express that some of these bins are unsightly and they're near the road and 
maybe that poses an issue for potential tourism and things like that. I just wanted to see what council's feedback on possibly pushing them back away from the road, like not getting rid of the bins completely, but moving them away from the direct roadside yeah. as a as a bylaw. Yeah. If you move them out too far, if they're leaving their garbage in there and the uh, uh, roadside pickup goes in the box and and rather than putting their bags on the side of the road, put push them up too far, they will be missed. Mm -hmm. They won't they won't go out their way too far to, to, to go in these boxes. Yeah, I think that the the point would have been made to you know, on garbage day you'd have to go put it. You'd have to go put yeah. it. I don't know how council feels about that. Mm -hmm. So those things five meters from the edge of the, of the roads. Within five meters of the edge of the roads they have to pick up. So if your boxes are within five meters of the roads. They're supposed to go pick it up. Okay. Fifteen That's what I'm saying, yeah. Well. And it's the owner's responsibility to keep the air tidy at all times. So yeah. there's a lot of work to do. Yeah. Because I know on a windy day when my when my uh, uh, recyclables happen to fall a little away from the shoulder, I have to go pick it up the next day because they don't they don't bother going. And it's definitely not within five. And it's not a ditch, it's just a little bang. Yeah. So I'm just trying to understand the issue. Is the issue the unsightliness of the bin? Yeah. The bin. Or is it that the bin is out there too long and therefore? No, it's not the bin. Sightliness of the bin. So yeah, the but green, it's not you're referring to the green bin. No. no. Homemade, bin. homemade homemade boxes. Homemade boxes. Homemade boxes. Oh. Oh. Only okay. boxes. All right, I wasn't clear. The yeah. town of Yarmouth rejected them. The town of Yarmouth rejected their use of any kind, so maybe that's where he got his I could motivated be. from. But uh, I just want to hear council's opinions on either pushing them back or. I have never had a complaint about that. That's the first time. Me too. What should have brought up? I've never had. You don't mind. And there's everything from wire tape ones mm -hmm. to nice, beautiful wooden ones. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe we can defer if, if you do hear feedback now that it's been raised, we can mm -hmm. look at it back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Letter to TIR regarding Drumlin Heights Consolidated School sidewalk. They're asking for, really, what they're asking for is for TIR to to widen the shoulder so that at least they have a place to walk because now from the school to the uh, Argyle Head Road apparently the shoulder is so narrow as it is in a lot of areas in this in this municipality that, but you have kids from school walking apparently and you're right on a, a corner there as well and they have to walk on the pavement. So well, really they're a looking for a letter, yeah. a letter from us or a letter of support from us. Yeah, that's the, that's the route they have to follow for their emergency planning exercises. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So I mean it should be widened or something. Mm -hmm. So I make the motion that we write a letter of su support and I'll I'll send, send it. it to the... Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Carried. Okay. It's a long meeting. Transportation infrastructure. Financial requests, we have none at this point. Anybody agenda topics for next meeting or notice of motion? Question period, anything on the internet? No. Uh, Scott is saying no. No. And we have an in-camera session still to go through. Motion to go camera. 